Hello everybody, far and wide, and welcome to this farm that looks back in time. Courtesy of Cast 18 Studios, we hope you enjoy what's being called Throwback Thursday. Over the coming weeks, months, and hopefully years to come, we hope that you will enjoy us opening the vaults and archives to look back at some of the most unique content across all of our platforms, whether it's Cast 18 Studios, the Jeff Beecham Network, NoDQ.com, my simple YouTube channel, The Simple Man's Brand, and of course, Hebrew Productions, hosted by James Hebert at jhebertside95. It basically is just going to offer you a ton of classic content. So with that being said, buckle up, have fun, take a seat, just enjoy life, and enjoy wrestling, and enjoy what this Throwback Thursday has in store for you. And again, I hope that you stay tuned for many more that hopefully will come too. Now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. Scan the QR codes to see what's upcoming for FTW Productions and what's available on demand right now. Owen the Talkinator Studios series premiere of Owen and AJ Talks. Welcome to the FTW family, Zero Miller. 
shared experiences re-airing on the new FTW main hub. All Retro Wrestling Review Series videos on demand and upcoming. The Wrestling Rundown makes its return, available now on demand. Fantasy Booking Series video, if Goldberg stayed in WWE in 2004. Pride CAW Supercard by Zero Entertainment. All of a Simple Man's Brand Simply Predicting Panels. Simple Bracketology Season Premiere covering the G1 Climax 33. AEW Spark, WWE Aftershock, every show week by week. Indie Force Episode 26, available now on demand. Jeff Meacham Network, all watch along events. AEW Double or Nothing Dynamite Go Home Show Watch Party, available now on demand. A Simple Take, WWE Simple Takes featuring Cats of the 18 Studios. Super Mario Bros. Z, voice acting. Episode 3 coming soon. Breaking news. ATW View Impromptu. WYW Intro and Immortal Stream. Wrestling with Idiocy Episode 8. Fast Food and Restaurants Discussion. Plugs have concluded. On to the video. Studios, an affiliate of the Jeff Beecham Network Multiverse of Media, proudly presents this retro content from A Simple Man's Brand. The Owens are finally upon us. We have finally moved past WrestleMania Backlash. Things are starting to move around a bit too in NJPW. And are we finally getting trios titles in All Elite Wrestling 2? This and so much more to discuss ahead for all of you here on another edition of the ATW View. Impromptu. So hello everybody. Good morning, good evening, good night. Whenever you may watch this on live or on demand, you know what this is. For I am the simple man and my name is Noel Foster. We are ATW. This is my family. A con congregation of people that enjoy talk about rant and discuss all things wrestling so with that being said let's go ahead and introduce tonight's crew i will first start off with the blur of all things news but he'll sometimes tell you it's simply because of reasons my great friend yeah, i'm pretty sure what i'm about to say later um games give me about. more piss i think no, well, I'm great. curious, but before we get to Can't that, wait. everybody, Can't wait. this is Eric Brown. <laughs> Hi, How Eric. are you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. <laughs> All right, subtly and simple. Uh, that being said, the guy that interrupted, folks, he is, get the last name right, Ebert. Thank you. Ebert. Thank you. Ebert. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's different. He hosts his own little league and nation of all sorts of fans wrestling productions, video game wide. If you haven't seen Immortal, go see it. Uh, founder, leader, creative, representative of Weymouth Youth Wrestling. He is James Hebert. Yes. At Jay Hebert side 95. James, how are you? I, I'm doing great, although I had a pretty big botch in the beginning of this already. Uh, I, <laughs> I did not uh, fix the title and the tags of this uh, stream, but I just did the, I just did the title now. So. <laughs> Hey, hey, be hey, better late than never. There you go, hey. guys. Refresh you know the what? feed, and it's fi it should be fixed. My my apologies. It's, it's you all know set. What? It wouldn't be something related to wrestling without a botch at some point, in some way, shape, or fashion. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, right. That being said. He's known as the Wrestling Encyclopedia. He is my NJPW correspondent. We will come back together to discuss the G1 Climax and also the Forbidden Door very soon. But once again, I'm glad to be back with Casey Gallagher. Casey, how are you? Good evening, my friend. How are you tonight? I guess you've lost. I'm doing very well. Good to see you. We had a hell of a time calling under siege. I can't wait to see you for uh, 
Slammiversary, which of course is right before the Pandora, and even before that, we have Double or Nothing, which is why I saved this guy for last, because when it comes to all the wrestling, me and him have been down since day zero. He is the king of ATW, and he will also be leading a very special topic tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, King A-Train. King, how are you? Feeling great, Noah. Just coming off a very good mood of last night. Shout out to my Golden State Warriors for pulling off the closest victory in the playoff series last night as we leave the series 3-1 and we head to Memphis on Wednesday, which I will watch after Dynamite. Say, can I, before can I just say, we can I just say really quick? Can I just say really quick, it might just be me and it might just be the hair, but for my money, you bear a little bit more than a passing resemblance to the king of swerves, if you will. <laughs> well, whose house? <laughs> Your house. <laughs> but, in, but in essence, AEW might as well be Swerve's house with what he and Keith Lee have definitely formed together. That being said, folks, you now know the family, you now know the crew, you got an idea of what's ahead too. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So first off, Eric. Gang isn't back yet. Well, then maybe this will help James Psyche. Because when it comes to you, Eric, I go to you, you for news that... You didn't have to point it out. I am literally just went to get a drink. I'm here now. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Again, folks, there's no script. There's no censorship. We do whatever the hell we want and point out what we want, too. So that being said, I want Eric to cue us off with what's on his mind or what he's heard lately <sighs> in the world of wrestling news. So, Eric, what's been going on? <laughs> What the bear okay, Well, first off, New Japan is currently actively on fire. We'll, we'll get back on that. There's Wait, what? some other details that came. Wait, on New fire Japan literally? Hold active. on. On fire literally or metaphorically? Metaphorically speaking. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Tony kind of likes to do when he's on Twitter. Okay. Oh, oh, oh that that's... other guy who, who used to be on Twitter but is banned because of insanity, but I will not say anything yeah. yet. Name redacted. Yet. <laughs> redacted. Anyways... <laughs> Um, okay. Has anyone been watching SmackDown? I know no one here likes WWE, but I, I just need to ask if anyone's been following what's going on on SmackDown. Negative the, cheese. I leave, that, yeah. I leave that to Aaron Riff's no DQ uh, recaps and reviews because hosting yeah. that predictions late, that's about as much knowledge as I need. You could flip a coin and be right in predicting that crap. Yeah, yeah, but what yeah. you gotta um, say about it? Has anyone been watching any of Lacey Evans' uh, build-up videos they've been building around? Yes, for? I've seen them. I've seen them on YouTube. Yes, I have. Yeah, I have seen, seen those. The show, yes. They seem okay. to show a real personal side of her that makes her look like a coming back hero. Uh, let me get to that. Uh, so they've been describing her as a victim of abuse. I, the, I think the... that isn't that true. I thought it was. Well, uh, I did, well, I don't women. know for certain, but um, have they been addressing that on TV? I have no idea, but it wouldn't. I would not put it past them using a real life situation towards yeah, their well, creativity. Yeah, uh, well, let's put an update on that. So, despite the fact that they've been really bringing this in and building her up like a face, they're moving her to Raw, and making her this victim abuse uh, a villain because, of course, they want to. Wait, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Cool. I'm out. Wait. She was being booked to return to SmackDown. I heard she returned to SmackDown, and now you're telling me yes. they're turning her to Raw as a heel, but as a victim. It's the villain. They're going to make a, a, a victim of abuse a villain in the story, and this is by PW Insider confirming it, because of course oh, they did. Of course. Does anyone hey. have anything to say regarding this? Uh, let me no. just say this. Um, if this was 2020 and the speaking out movement was just happening again, if this would actively set the company on fire. Yeah, probably. I agree. You're talking about Definitely. litigations that would freaking break this company's wallet heavily. <laughs> All I have to say is Star Wars did it better, guys. Leave it to G Leave it to G <laughs> <laughs> Remember what Stephanie McMahon said? <laughs> she thinks they could be as big as Marvel. Disney. <laughs> Casey, That's you. It, but Casey, Marvel and Disney are underneath the same umbrella. Casey, you single handedly just killed the Star Wars franchise with one fucking swerve. Holy shit. We just careened into a wall, dude. Well, it's not no, the first one we go into, I'm sure. 
Oh my Damn. lord. Also, um, I got some updates on Kore Ibushi. He's on who's, a podcast, apparently. Whose house? Not the E's and not, not Star Wars, apparently. What's going oh, no. on at Kore oh, no. Ibushi's house? We, Japan oh, no. Here's wrestling. what's happening. Here, uh, before you get to that, Eric, sorry, I gotta clarify for James. Okay. Go ahead. The E is trying to move into Star Wars' house, and George uh, Lucas is saying, get the hell out. Oh! Enough money to invest in that intellectual property. Anyway, uh, what's going on with NJPW and Kota Ibushi? Well, uh, Kota Ibushi is apparently getting... Apparently, Kota Ibushi is probably on his way out the door. Ooh. Whoa! Yeah, apparently hmm. he's been um. Apparently, I, I'm not 100 certain. Like the, he keeps posting a bunch of stuff on Twitter saying uh, there are things that no one wants to tell you. There are things that New Japan management won't tell you. And here's the best way to describe it. Um, they a certain manager in New Japan. Well, just to is apparently getting into messages and saying, "Look, Coda was basically look. If you're gonna just fire me, fire me, please." Huh. Like, yeah, like he wants out, here, basically. Maybe? Yeah, and apparently yeah. this manager who's been um, who was handling New Japan merch. Uh, in fact, Coda and this manager of New Japan has been going back and forth with each other since 2018. Ooh, and apparently this guy was also shorting him on merch money. Oh, that's fun. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But apparently, Coda's been kind of battling off on Twitter and actively starting something. This is the guy that I look at, and I don't think as a outgoing personality, per se, no. when it comes to Twitter, I of especially. Coda. I just think of Coda as, like, a quiet person. Yeah, right. so well, that and typically Well guess what Kone Bushi has been outing, and this is the part where things get dark. Oh no. Oh bo okay. Oh, boy. Ibushi is calling out New Japan management's abuse of sexual assault and power. Oh, oh no. Uh oh. And the higher ups who aren't happy with this and with the stern status quo going on behind the scenes aren't happy that um that Kota is whistleblowing and they want to fire him and Ibushi's like okay I'm like I'm sure there's another company that could hire me there's plenty uh, of other companies that'll hire him true. yeah well, in fact there's one who's actually his best, best friend. friend in it well that's yep. what I'm yeah I'm just considering so if this is true which I don't I don't know if it, it is yet I mean I would imagine Coda well, would have someone no... compiled a um, list of timelines. Right, I, I would imagine Coda yeah. doesn't have a reason to lie anyway. So, like, who? Uh, I hate to be also the bearer. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news because that's usually Eric's job anyway, of all things news. But I, this could really end the partnership <laughs> AEW and New Japan built prematurely. Like, yeah. well, it I feel like really could end this before it even gets off the ground if this is if this comes out as any more true. Well, considering how Rocker Romero has been really the bridge, per se, in this partnership, and then the president of New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling America, you also got to wonder how Rocker Romero feels about this, too, or if maybe even he may be part of this internal committee and maybe also in this thing, too. This does feel a little bit dark to the point that this could affect the NPW. Worse than a Nokiaism, uh, considering I, what day and age we live in. I want to know who it is. This is this is the fucking problem. Oh who, no, curiosity. Who is it? Is it multiple people? Is it one person? Is it. Can they get rid of these people and then we're we're on good terms, no problem? Okay, that, that's so that's the question I have. I I'm trying to get this guy's name. Um, I, I can't pronounce it. Um, I think his, I think the guy's name who's having issues with Ibushi especially is his, okay, let me just spell out the name since I can't say it. K-I-K-U-C-H-I. Kakushki? Uh, Kikuchi? Kikuchi. Kikuchi? Kikuchi? I think so. 
Kikuchi. Why don't we see what his position currently in New Japan was since he was yeah. in charge of the merge? I've never heard that name, so I was like, you know. Was and he, he, this is new. Okay, he is not the president, correct? No, no, that's Shigabayashi. That's the okay, so, so as long as the so, president... Yeah. This right, is huh? my this is my hope. As long as the president is involved and they can get rid of these fuckers, cool. Fair but they enough, need to do I, it I, and I, fast because if they don't act and they try to cover this shit up, we're in a bad fucking like you are fucking over your business because the last thing you need when you're just about to get back onto good graces with the American fan after so long of being in a drought is this shit to come out and completely halt your momentum and kill your partnership with AEW before the pay-per-view is even scheduled to happen. I feel like, it's even worse than that, James. You gotta consider who else New Japan works with. They also work with Glee. MLW, work with yeah. They MLW, Impact, yeah. Hey, hey guys, I got an update. Go ahead. Go for it. This is what one of the quote tweets that Kota Ibushi wrote and someone translated it. Okay, go This ahead. is where things start to get off the rails. I'll expose all about the former cheater's gun already returned and the sexually harassing bosses from the company's president's lies to his unreasonable power harassment this time. Get prepared for this. Tospo and TV Asha too. This is in relation to the current president of New Japan, correct? Not I the former. I, I'm not 100% the, sure. Because there, the there were two presidents, uh, maybe even three, in Kota Ibushi's time while he was a part of New Japan. Including Harold, who's no longer with the company. That's what. That's why I'm thinking yeah. it's one of those three, or is it all of the above? We we don't know. Again, curiosity, James, and it's a dangerous thing. But in this day and age, it is curiosity that breathes or kills anything in the wrestling industry. Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. So I tried to look into who's this guy. Um. Up, there is no update on about him other than that he worked as a man, a person in the merchandise. But apparently, he is a little bit high up in the in the management backstage. Wow. And yeah, he he threatened this. Um, shall we end your contract with New Japan then? If that's what New Japan are asking, then I have no choice. I'll take responsibility for it. So Kona's like, fire me, do it. Wow. Fire me, fire me if you have the guts to do it. Damn. Huh. Well, we'll just, we'll just have to stay tuned how this uh, unfolds. But uh, bottom line is this: again, the wildest not, year I'm, professional wrestling. Yeah, I'm, this is what I'm gonna say uh, until it's fully aff yeah, affirmed. Right. I'm not fucking saying it anymore uh, at this point. Uh, like it's rumors until, and I, and I like Coda himself saying this stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? Like right. I like Coda, but I'd be. I, look, look, just because I like him doesn't mean I have to take everything he says at face value. I got, I gotta exactly. wait until more shit comes out. Because honest to God, not for nothing, but I'm kind of sick of the let's just take one guy's side over everybody else's bullshit. That's the internet. So I'm yeah. not, I'm not on that train. I'll wait until yeah, things come on. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I completely agree with that statement. Uh, apparently, like he's been leak, he's showing the texts of the conversations he's had. Uh, before we continue uh, to what we're scheduled to do, which is the Owen. By the way, uh, uh, this is how I think the format's going to go. By the way, just just to put in perspective, uh, bracket uh, bracket match, two bracket matches. Eric gives news. Two two more bracket matches. Eric gives more news. Sound good, everybody? <laughs> It sounds fair, but again, we'll let King also, of course, uh, he's the one that... Uh, uh, the uh, yeah, in fairness, King. Like I said, that is all going to be handled by... I want to know I want to know if that's here, cool with so, you. I want to yeah. know if that's cool with you. Yeah. That is I'm, cool I'm, with me. That is cool with me. All right, well, cool. there you go. I'm honestly so, going to call him King Swerve just for lols. <laughs> you know what? I'm <laughs> King Swerve. He just changed his nickname to that. <laughs> just pulls a picture of the Swerve and see if he's got a file. Uh, I mean, hey, yo, yo, wait, work work. everybody get uh, all aboard the Swerve Train! <laughs> Come on, uh, give me a good prison, man. Give me a good prison, man. I'm still saying AEW owes me because I came up with that Swerve in our glory. <laughs> I actually thought about it. I'm, I'm on down. Know, hey, jo join the club, Eric. Jo hey, Eric, Eric, join the club. <laughs> 
Well, well, hey, I don't have the I don't have the video evidence. I only have you guys to be my witnesses because you were there when I said it. Oh, I I remember well, you well, saying hey. this. Oh. Go ahead. We yeah, remember. Well, hey. We remember. Well, hey, as long as we're infringing on gimmicks, come on down to whose house? Dwarves house. ATW's and house. Again. What do you mean? Oh, and and for the people in the comment section, we'll read your comments. Uh. Throughout everything as well, I'll I'll find time for that as well. Yeah, keep us posted on anything uh, worthwhile, Jane. Yeah, so, keep keep so live guys, chatting. Keep live chatting. So let's keep so let's keep moving forward because as you know, we try and do this like within a month, a little bit over maybe a month span. We literally haven't been together since after the madness that was the insanity of all things wrestling come together during the first weekend of April. Since then, we've had rebellion. We've had freaking under siege. We had Dantaku, we had Bullet Club's anniversary, and quite some surprises there too. We had the announcement of the Forbidden Door literally now being a thing, and here we stand now in May on the verge of one of the most prolific wrestling tournaments done in AEW history. A lot has gone down, so let's go ahead and look a little bit though at some side of things in the industry. Let's start with Impact Wrestling. Josh Alexander finally overcame his near seventh month journey, conquering Moose. Literally, we called that guys at Rebellion. He reclaimed the Impact World Championship. Mm -hmm. And most recently, we saw the intro to Impact Wrestling for now of the Stone Pit Bull, Tomohiro Ishii, a guy that I believe should be a champion. And the fact that he's not still just baffles me. And we just saw an insane physical classic with him and Josh Alexander yeah. at Under Siege. If, if Casey, you, you were there for that. You and I called that. Again, Under Siege, the fact that show was 3 hours, 21 minutes, 12 matches, and delivered on all fronts truly is something impressive. Impact Wrestling's had one of the greatest years in their business. That they are, and you and I called that? What the hell is James? Chop liver? Yeah, what no, the James fuck? No, James is down there too. I started with you. I was going to get his rebuttal. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Case. But, but continue. Oh, man. Oh, dude. Uh, that was an incredible war. Ishii and Alex and Josh basically gave us of their souls during that classic war for the Impact World title. Yeah. And and hardly the only war on that night. No, and there was so <laughs> yeah, much say great the, show. Say the least. There was so much good shit on that show. Seriously, if you guys have had reservations about go, watching Impact, man, I'll, I'll tell you this much. I did too when I first started watching Impact full time again. When, when did I start commentating with you and Jeff Noah on Impact? That stuff? would have been. I think, the, I, think the, I think the first time we literally commentated was uh, WWE. Oh, it was. It was hard to kill. It was hard. It to kill. was hard it was to kill. kill. It was an Impact show that that we started. The, yeah, that it was the first pay this year. Yeah, I, dude, I'm telling you, every show that I have checked out of Impact, even even the weekly shows, when I can when I have time to catch up on it. You owe it to yourself if you have tuned out of Impact desperately hoping for it to get better and it never getting better for such a long time. And I know because I was one of those people. You owe it to yourself to check it out again, man. Holy fuck. Every, every Impact show that I have called since that pay-per-view at Turning Point has been fucking stellar. Like... The, the X Division may be the best it's ever been. I'm not even stunning when I say that. That may be a hot take, but Ace Austin, Trey Miguel, Mike Bailey, uh, Rich Swan, and who was the other guy in the Triple Threat? I, for, I forget the other guy in the Triple Threat. Laredo Kid. Laredo Kid. And Steve Macklin. I mean, some of these X Division class, man, this current X Division class, honest to God, might be the best I've seen since that class in 05. It's, and it's that damn good. And to think that Chris Saban and Alex Shelley are also still around. Yeah, Chris Saban and Alex Holy Shelley are still Albert. there as well. Like, this X Division is fucking outstanding. I don't, you, I don't, I don't know, know how... an update about the X Division. Go for it. Go for it. Segment. Uh, Moose said he wants to join in on the fun. I don't I blame him. That. Are you kidding me? I that. Bro. Wait, who? Moose. I don't blame him one Moose. bit. Seriously. Look, at, I, and and I have no doubt in my mind that Moose can fucking deliver great in the X Division, but seriously, if you are a top guy on Impact and you're seeing what the frickin' X Division's doing, of course you want to go there, too. Yeah, well, the X Division is defined by no limits. It's as incredible. We definitely know. 
And speaking of uh, things with uh, no limits, again, let's not just talk about the men, let's talk about the women of Impact Wrestling. As the knockouts division has been delivering on all fronts too, when it comes to the Triple R Rance, the Rance Championship, the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship, the Knockouts Championship, the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. Four sets of titles have been displayed by the knockouts since uh, Hard to Kill, particularly by one of the best in the game today in all of women's wrestling, Kiyo in my Kiyo opinion. Kiyo The Virtuosa. Yeah. As we know, the Virtuosa had a champ champ challenge to a degree. Seven successful defenses while holding two championships. But again, continue to make history. She's been a part of AAA. She's been a part of, of course, back wrestling's main event. She's been a part now of AEW's main event against Mercedes Martinez. And most recently, she had a match second time around with Laura Volca, Taya Valkyrie, for the AAA Arena at the Reina's Championship. Fell short. Taya now back at Impact. Mia Yim is back home in oh, Impact Wrestling. Yep. King. We follow Mia Yim, the HBIC, during her run in NXT. We didn't know what she was going to do when she was released by the WWE. But as Rosemary alluded to, and for those that don't know, Mia Yim's former identity was Jade as Nagas champion. She's back home, brother. Yes, she is. And I have an update. Usually, like like James was saying about Eric, Eric, we, we don't want to have news. But I have news on Mia Yim's contract in Impact. Turns out she is going to be there for only six months. Only six months. Yeah. So I'm willing to see within this six month return of hers of what she brings to this current crop of the women's division. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a fun. I have night. one. Go for it. What you I got in mind? It's basically me having precognition that I could see the future. AKA, I heard an announcement for Slam Anniversary. Of course, because as we know, Impact Wrestling has tapings in advance, and the next big show, James and Casey, is Slam Anniversary. Moose versus Callahan. Let's freaking go. Sammy Callahan is back. Oh, my God. Oh, Sammy Callahan is back, yeah. Yeah, we got some you good, know, we got some good stuff. Uh, that man. machine what? is pissed. Bro, I'm telling yeah, you. He's... Isn't he always, though? Yeah, I'm telling you. God bless is. him. And I'm... God bless him for it. Absolutely. He's Impact Wrestling at heart, though. A lot of these people in Impact Wrestling are truly this company at heart. Moose, Deanna Perrazzo, Sammy Callahan, you name it. And again, I stand by it. The Nagos Division is one of the most well-booked, prolific, top-to-bottom, quality, balance, in quality talents in all of professional wrestling, non-all women's promotions. On the planet. Yeah, 100%. Oh, I agree. Knockout division hanging into Slam Anniversary. Go ahead. Well, that's an advance, folks. Yes. Gail Kim has announced one of the main events Jordan Grace, Mia Yam versus Diara Perrazzo versus Chelsea Green versus Tasha Steeles in the first ever Queen of the Mountain match. Oh, I'm actually looking forward Stand. to that. Ooh. I'm looking forward to that, actually. Dude, we're a lot finally of... getting a Queen of the Mountain? First ever. Gail Kim announced it on, on Impact. I love the this anniversary. People Gail hate... Kim, you are brilliant. People... You are freaking brilliant. People hate the idea of the King of the Mountain. That's actually one of the things that I think Jeff Jarrett created that was fucking awesome. Almost, about almost Impact. definitely it was. Dude! I love the idea, least. man. Like it, it like yes, I, I don't know if it was him or if it was Russo, it, but credit to either one of them it, whoever did it, but like it's one of the few ideas if it is Russo's that isn't so convoluted and it and it does make sense from from beginning to end. It even the whole putting the belt on top of it just to differentiate it from pulling it down. I like I think there's more of a struggle having the title and carrying it up the ladder gingerly. Because I can believe somebody's going to have a tough time climbing a freaking ladder and yes. holding a 10 pounds of gold on the other shoulder. You know what I mean? Like, that makes sense to me. Like, I, I like that. I like the the innovation there. I've always liked the King of the Mountain. I, I'm ready. I, I don't even care. I'm ready for this. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. Impact Wrestling continuing to set standards and break barriers. I think I've said it clearly with all of you. When it comes to Impact Wrestling, they are the mecca, the beacon, the center point of this entire shared wrestling universe. Everything comes and goes and goes through some way or form Impact Wrestling. Now, if we, if I can throw a little bit of a prediction in there, a, a, a conditional prediction, 
Uh, has Jordan Grace lost the digital media title? Yes. He lost it a while ago yes. to Matt Cardona. Yeah, Matt Cardona has it as right now. Okay. Yes. In which case, I'm picking Jordan Grace to win this match. Again, Jordan Grace, pick Mama Pump, the only woman on that entire roster that could mix up with any hey. man or woman in any division. Hey, bro. Pick Mama Pump, I love it. Uh, I know, I know, I wasn't gonna, I, I know, I was gonna save it for when I found an opening, but uh, I gotta, I gotta hold, hold the phone for one of our boys at ATW. Shout out to JD Ultra in the chat. Yo, yo, <laughs> what's yo, up, man? JD Ultra, what up, boy? <laughs> What's up, uh, again, Slimmiversary is going to be absolutely something special. Again, I went there live last year. I saw from the Rose vs. Dion Peraza. I saw the Ultimate X and that crazy four-way submission chain. I saw Sammy Callan vs. Kenny, by God, oh, Omega, man. in that crazy death match and so much more. This is going to be a show to remember. Emma from Nashville, Tennessee. And again, the when it comes to Dion Peraza, you so. know she's going to have a marquee spot. On that card. By the way, uh, if if more if we want to get more people on the thing, can someone actually post this uh, stream to the ATW View uh, chat on Twitter, so that way they know. I think uh, that's a uh, possible, but cool, I mean, cool. it all depends if someone's interested. And they say let me in in the chat. I got no problem with that. You know that. Spam well, yeah, yeah. I'm just I making sure. The link, uh, do you want me to send the link into the? Twitter yeah, yeah, chat? The, yeah. The YouTube, yeah, the YouTube uh, link to the chat, Twitter chat if you have it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So, cool. look at that as we talk about more of Impact Wrestling. Yeah, let's talk about the X Division. As you said, we got the Morrison Machine Guns. They've been competing lately in singles actions. Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. Alex Shelley was not on uh, Under Siege. He was involved, though, at a uh, multiverse of uh, matches. And we also, of course, have seen Chris Saban. He definitely has rose to the occasion, as always, one of the best. And he and Macklin had an absolute war at Under Siege, and Salmon came out on top. When I think about Chris Salmon, he's one of the most prolific X Division champions in that company's history. I think about Macklin, I think he's a future X Division champion. But the fact that Macklin lost to Salmon, I feel Salmon's uh, next in contention recently. I'll be what honest. Your guys thoughts on that? I'll be honest with you. I'll go first on this. I don't. I don't. Not that Macklin can't be in the future, but for me, fuck the X Division for him. Put him right in that world title picture. I want to see Macklin and Alexander so badly. I want that match. You have no idea. Like, okay, everybody thought so little of these guys as singles competitors, especially before the North happened and b before Macklin got released from the WWE. Nobody gave these two an ounce of shit uh, when it came to their singles abilities, and they have proven Every single person Ron, and they have delivered five-star classic after five-star classic in Impact. I want this match like you don't even know. Like, this match would be outstanding to watch. King, on, on that note, it was Steve Maglin who fought. He should have challenged Josh Alexander for the Impact World Championship, but Scott Moore can't pick Terminator CE. With that sort of uh, endorsement by James, do you agree that it should be maybe Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin at Slimiversary? Oh, most definitely, because like Steve Macklin has what it takes to basically to become a contender for Josh Alexander's World Heavyweight Championship. He should leave the X Division behind. That's past him now. Yeah. I agree with James's uh, sentence on it. I mean, uh, agreement with this. Well, update on that. Uh, Impact Bowl tell, tells James and King that they hate you. Oh, what do you mean? Guess who, they're, guess who they're likely going for? Who? What? Go ahead. Josh Alexander versus OG Eric Young. Really? Canada yeah. Hall Eric experience. Huh. Okay. Well, considering Eric Young came in at a slim anniversary when his return to Impact Wrestling and is a former Impact World Champion himself, and both men are Canadian. I know Casey Flynn isn't here, but Casey, that Canadian ever was for you. Uh... That, not even that. Not even that. We've already seen that. Does it yeah, I swear we did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that these two have faced each other one on one. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not saying uh, Josh versus Young, but we've seen Canadians fighting for the champion. Yeah, we saw yeah, we Josh have, and, yes, and Christian. Have. Yeah, we yes. did. in Canada, nonetheless, too. If we want to go that deep, I, I'm not hmm. against it. I'm sure it it's would be a great be a good match, match. but. But the money is good. Absolutely May, uh, you know what? I'll be okay with it 
if at the very least they go and do this at Bound for Glory, and that's why they're not doing it at Slammiversary. I'm fine if they decide that, you know what, this match is too big for Slammiversary even. Put this shit on Bound for Glory. Although, I've always thought that Slammiversary was the more bigger show. Personally, too, actually. Like, th that's the only show in Impact's history, minus, I think, maybe... Slammiversary. Actually, no. That was a Slammiversary, too. That's the only show that has gotten into major, big, fucking decent size arenas. Yes. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. And it's and, the marquee. And it's the marquee. It's the, it's the biggest pay-per-view buy of all time with Kurt Angle and Joe. So, yes. I don't know I don't know why this isn't their biggest show of the year. It's, I, and that's no disrespect to Bound for Glory. That's, that's up there, but I think that's the SummerSlam of the company. Genuinely well, speaking, I agree because yeah. I thought, like, I've always thought Slam Anniversary was Impact's WrestleMania and Bound for Glory was their SummerSlam. Yeah, that's their that's their two biggest shows of the year. I, I definitely agree in with you which there. Case, in which case, is it bad of me that the only PPV, especially in the Glory days, that I ever really gave two craps about was Lockdown? I want that back so bad. Not necessarily. Bring that back. Bring that back. Yeah. Lockdown was War Games reinvented in a way. Yeah, and they do need to bring that back. That. Especially, especially the X Division escape matches. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you, don't, yes. you don't get much more you don't get much more war games than that. Yeah. 100%. No, you don't. And stay tuned, folks, on the Jeff Meacham Network, where they will be recalling this and so much more when it comes to celebrating TNA's 20 years. If you haven't already, go check out the Jeff Meacham Network. Be a fan. Subscribe to them today. Hi, Jeff. See you soon. Hi, Jeff. Speaking of the Vince Russo era of Bro. Impact, there was an update on Russo. He said something in a podcast recently. What oh, thoughts are you saying in this podcast? <laughs> Can't like, come on. All right, lay it on me. He's been getting a call from somebody. He got this call, basically. This is what he's claiming. I'm not sure if he's telling the truth or not, but it seems like he... But I wouldn't be surprised to see how crazy things have gotten. Go ahead. Hey, uh, pal. Um, I, I need you to critique my prog, damn it. You know what? You know what? I fucking believe it. <laughs> I mean, At this point. Spurs on this man. <laughs> Just saying. I believe it. Do, do we need to say anything about the past? Do we need to say anything about the past? Yeah. I, <laughs> that Ben takes the past, and now he wants to bring back someone from the past to come back to play the past, except it's going to be horribly done horribly. I feel like well, Vince... Well, the first time they've retconned something, to be fair. Vin, just saying. Hold on. Vince legitimately... Here's the thing with that, with Vince. I always feel like he's bouncing back between hating the past and loving the past. Like, you hear stories where he's bipolar, like, all the time with this shit. Every week, it's something different. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he doesn't have a good stake two days in a row, and all of a sudden, he's a different man. You turn the coin sideways. Yeah, that's when he wants his steak wrap. That's a burrito, that's really? Vince. Oh, hello. You guessed. Well, if it isn't, the other commentary correspondent, or should I say pre-show panelist, most recently from the Jeff <laughs> Asian Network. Good to see you, Mike. Nice. Hi, Mike. He's getting himself enough. annoyed. I'm sure he's going to have some witty thing to say that's going to... I don't have enough fucking brain cells for this. <laughs> <laughs> God. Did my Vince Russo come and break him? <laughs> I think you... I think that. Uh, Mike that, heard the he name... too much stress in his life. Mike heard the name Russo. He's like, fuck this shit. <laughs> Bro, I'm gone. Fuck See ya. Shit, I'm out. Like, I, I totally understand that. With the moment you hear Vince Russo might be in contact with WWE, then you know you should panic. Yeah, at this point. Uh, before we... Poor, poor Mike. <laughs> I, th I, think, I, think, I think the best way I can sum it up is a quote from the late Pat Patterson. God rest him. Some days he likes vanilla. Some days he likes chocolate. At the end of the day, it's his ice cream shop. Yeah. What was that? That's uh, pretty ironic. Sure. Can I can I say this before we begin? Uh, before we do any news, we should probably at least break down two matches, one from each tournament. Before we... yeah, let's go ahead and submerge. We don't have to do it all at once. I'm fine with breaking it up across things because, as you alluded to, James King, you said you wanted to do a bit of bracketology fun, as we now have our Owens form to a degree, as each tournament has certain participants 
and a Joker waiting. We have a couple of match callbacks from AEW history, and we have a couple of matches never seen in AEW, but these opponents are no strangers to each other when it comes to their time in the Indies and in pro wrestling. We know we got three matches tomorrow, so with that being said, King, you want to talk about the Owen? Take it away, introduce it, and then go from there. In September 20th of last year, we, the Tony Khan brought the news on Twitter. And it was the news that basically I never thought I would expect. Neither of us AEW fans would have expected. No, that or any wrestling fan in the last 20 years would expect. Yeah, period. And on that day, he announced that AEW and the Owen Hart Foundation have announced the partnership. Which basically, by all means, that was basically our rejoicing moment in professional wrestling history because of the fact that, well, we had to, well, and people were saying, when is Owen going to finally get his due? Owen got his due, but basically, you know, people would say, oh, Owen should have been represented at WWE Hall of Fame, this and that. It wasn't going to happen, not unless you had Martha Hart had owned the rights to the name. It wasn't going to happen in WWE because of what happened at Over the Edge. You can kiss that always goodbye. At least in AEW, Tony Khan can give basically the blessing to Mark the Heart that should have got and treat the Owen name with respect and respect the legacy of Owen Hart, yep. how it should be done in the first place. And I'm very happy she found a company that she's confident enough will honor him very fondly and is able to finally be at peace. You know what I mean? Like that. I think that's what it comes down to is like, at yeah. the end of the day, I'm sure all these years, especially with the gratuitous amounts of hate that she got from fans, and even her own family at times, for not allowing like a wrestling company to celebrate the legacy of Owen Hart. She finally found a company where she says, you know what, this is the company. I know they'll, I know they'll do it right, and I know Owen would love this company. He would have loved it here. I feel like since the Brody Lee tribute show, the entire wrestling industry was opened up a different way, at least for two hours when it came to a perspective of what you should think of the industry or at least what you should try and identify when it comes to all elite wrestling Yes, at the court. And especially yes. since Brody Lee's passing was one of the main motors that got the best in the world back. I, th I think that I you seven I think, years. I think you can argue that Brody Lee, as horrible as that was for us fans, I think that in and of itself was the reason that Martha went and got, you know, called up Tony Khan. Yeah, which now is we get weird to, to think about. Video you know? game. Yeah, yeah, that's so weird. You know, that and he's gonna be showed out since. Since Showdown's Legends of Wrestling in 2004, Dude. that was the last time he appeared in a wrestling video game. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm shocked an Martha AEW. signed off that. Didn't it, or or did Acclaim just not give a shit? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mike, Mike would know because he's in the chat now. That Mike. Did they, Mike's in the video game industry. He probably would know how all this would work. Did they sign? Did Acclaim sign off on Owen being in that game? Well, I can tell you this. I found the brain cells. Uh, they were in between the couch cushion and the arm of the chair, so that's a good thing. I found some. Well, before you talk about that, I need to ask, was it because of what I said about Vince Russo? No, well, I mean, if Vince Russo has brought up more brain cells died than most. Gotcha. I'm, not, I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> to, go back to, what was, to go back to what was going to be asked, um, <laughs> Acclaim, absolute, Acclaim as a company has to get the rights from individual to put the license property. So they okay. have to have Probably they talked to Brett more than anyone else because he's not, in there as well. I think so. that, no, they, they, they had to have talked to Martha. So yeah, uh, Probably. Uh, I'm just I, I'm just throwing whatever could have happened out there as a possibility. Okay. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, that being said, as far as the synopsis behind Owen Hart and the fact we got this tournament, King, why don't you go ahead and break down what's ahead that's literally less than 24 hours away? And let's get right into it. Let's start out with the right side of the bracket that they're going to kick off first. There, we're going to start with Jeff Hardy and Darby Allen. The oh match, the dream match that I feel like um, 
somebody's going to one up each other on the dangerous level on basically if anything you can do, I'm going to do it more dangerous than you. We yeah, knew this. <laughs> if we knew that this match was coming, but we're getting it now. Yeah, we're getting with the, in the with quarterfinals. The, the quarter, yeah, the and, and, first um, quarterfinals yeah. of the Owen. So, yeah. I'm going to give it to Casey to start it off, and then we're just going to go around whoever wants to jump in. Who do you have in this first round between Jeff and Darby, and why? Darby. Absolutely Darby. He's the younger, more up-and-coming talent. They want to keep their... Uh, they want to keep their tournament brackets full of younger faces and not do the WWE thing of showcasing the old over the hump uh, part timers. All love to Jeff. I've been a fan of his and Matt's for ages. Yeah, but um, th- this absolutely has to go to Darby. Uh, I'll James. I'll go after go you. Casey. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm with Casey, man. It's got to be Darby. Uh, that said. This very well has the potential to be the match of the tournament because these two are knucking futs. Uh, <laughs> all, I've never all heard th- that before. All things That's new. Uh, and uh, I genuinely think that they're just going to kill each other in some way, shape, or form. With some, You're going to see coffin drops or swantons in places you never would have expected, and it's going to be painful. So that I'm expecting something of that nature. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing how they do this. I wonder if they're going to actually swerve us. Like something tells me that there could be not saying there will be, but just to make things interesting that Jeff could win it and they'll do a match series between these two. That would be interesting. It would be, but here's the way I look at this. Cause when it comes to AEW, they're not, straightforward let's be honest here that's part of the reason why we like it okay they're not straightforward i look at this owen and i figure about okay what are you looking at here are you looking at storytelling are you looking at star building are you looking at who truly encompasses everything that was owen hart when it came to not only his personality but what he brought forward to wrestling if you look at the road to jeff hardy so alluded to when he was wrestling bobby fish who again total opposite of what jeff hardy is he felt a little bit of owen hart running through him and truth be told jeff hardy he did do a bit of actual mat wrestling to a degree and he feels like he can actually maybe uh, win this and hopes that that pushes him forward. We look at Darby Allen though, during that same road tour, he's like, Jeff and me, yeah, it's going to be special. We're, we basically like mirror each other. We're both reckless and crazy in and out of the ring. It's going to be something to see. But again, when I look at these two, I think about Darby Allen. He is, in a way, a pillar of AEW. He is, of course, a former TNT champion. You know how much Boy Lee holds to his heart. Owen Hart means a lot to everybody in this. Let's not discount that at all, especially for the men, if nothing else. But for me, Darby Allen, he has to move forward over here and what I think truly will be passing up the torch of who is the most reckless, extreme daredevil. Eric, I see, is pondering, so I will now throw it to him. Okay, two things. Jeff Hardy has kind of an advantage and a major disadvantage against him, since I I think Darby's going to win this. Jeff Hardy's advantage is that out of everyone in the tournament, he's the only one that actually fought Owen Hart. Yeah. Well, during his youngin' days in the WWF as a local jobber. When he and Matt lied about their ages. Yes. <laughs> yep. And the rest is history. Thank you, good old JR, who brought the Hardys into wrestling in the first place, might I add. There's a reason why I think he's not going to make it far in the tournament. Go for it. From the point of the uh, Jeff Hardy's banged up, I'm not surprised. Yeah. He's always yeah, I up. saw that. I, mean, I saw that now report. I'm thinking like, oh, God, you put him with that guy. Are you trying to, like, like, in, like? okay, here's the best way to describe it. It's basically, hey, let's make Cody Ibushi and Naito happen, but make it more, more. Um, let's see, that's, J-A, that's about, J-A yeah. Wrestling Edition. Yeah. yeah. Let's not bring Charles next. We'll we'll bring Charles back. Yeah, less about the neck and more about... Oh my god, how did he not die from falling from that height? <laughs> yeah, flip back first to the floor or on the steps or something much worse. Who knows what these two I got it, I got people it. are going to do. No, I think I know what they're going to try and do. Go ahead. What? They're going to have it be the main event. And they're going to be like, okay, we need to find a way to end this on a high note. Hey, Jeff, Darby, do you want to do the first ever AEW crash into the electrical boombox? Oh, no. 
No, I don't. I don't. Uh, let's let's not get too crazy here. Can you keep in mind this is a normal match. <laughs> I think we can do that. Uh, this is also the Owen, and again, yeah, it's a normal match. Let's let's not yeah. get too carried I don't away. They're gonna here. go that extreme to a degree. Yet they'll do uh, crazy Mike, shit, but not that yeah. crazy. Mike, do you have yeah. anything to add regarding this match? It's gonna be Darby because Jeff's either gonna be too smacked up to know where he is. Oh man. I, I'm just going to call it as it is because Jeff's always been smacked up in every major title, whatever, or any major tournament, Fuck whatever, that. in his career. He's still mad. He's, Am I wrong? In fairness, Am I wrong? In fairness, he is very much still mad about TNA, and I understand why, and to a degree. Uh, All I've said. You had one of Jeff Hardy's original TNA themes he used in it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead oh, Mike. All I'm saying is, is that if you're the company, the smarter decision is to put your put all your coins in the Darby Allen basket, and not put them back into the pill bag that is just funny. Uh, Dark. And listen, man, Dark. I, he's got he's still got a lot. Of, oh, it's by the way, um, I, has he been better since what? When was his last thing? 2020. Yes. I, would I say. believe so. Yeah, so I mean, he has been better. Uh, contract. No, that's true, but I don't know. I, I look at it from the perspective of somebody that says, hey, you know, he's got some demons that won't sit there and say that he's not an incredible performer. I'm not denying that factor. I'm just I saying that. that things like that tend to repeat themselves. Yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. And but it I would. As if you're the multi-million dollar company and you're looking to make more money, Jeff is the past, Darby's the future. Yeah. Makes mm -hmm. more sense to put your faith in Darby than Jeff, because Jeff's already had his greatest matches of all time. He's got his greatest moments, too. Yeah. Exactly. There's no reason to continue that and waste your time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah at this point, Jeff yeah. Hardy, last thing he needs to do, Revisit the Young Bucks one more time, and we'll see when that comes to. All right, uh, King, looks like we're all unanimous here as far as Darby Allen goes. What else do you have on pilot? Uh Let's see. So, continue with the first round on tomorrow night's card. We're going to, yes, Noah, we are going to talk about this. Tony Storm versus Jamie Hayter. Yeah. Now, you know between you and I, we're going to go to war with this because you a hater. Me and James down here, we Tony. We so, we Tony. <laughs> don't 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 you, let me take that though. You especially are Tony. <laughs> I didn't say uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Not on this one. I've already done it. But I'm not going to do it. So save okay. it. Save Never, it for the Zoom. Save it for the Zoom. Exactly. Um, oh, these so that two means you're are totally going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> these two are no strangers. To one another. I I I've always wanted to see this match go down. And we're finally going to get it. So, Noah, I'm going to turn this one on to you, Mr. Hater. Who you got and why, even though I already know the answer to this question. So, there's reasons I've been figuring about this uh, quite a bit. First off, I love stardom. I love Joshi Pro. I love Japanese strong style professional wrestling. And these two have never met each other in a one-on-one -on -one affair. There's only been one other occasion besides the tag match on Rampage that killed it, by the way. Those four killed it that these two were involved in the ring at the same time against each other in a way. It was a triple threat at Pro Wrestling Eve a few years ago with Chris Wolf. Jamie Hayter got the better of the other two. That being said, it's the first time ever one-on-one -on -one in professional wrestling. I look at it like this. Tony Storm is no stranger to tournaments. Tony Storm is no stranger to winning tournaments. She was involved with the Mae Young Classic under the other company. Won that. But I look at AEW, I think about here... What is the narrative? What is the pushing force besides proving the fact that you are as great as Owen Hart held himself to be too? I look at what I think could be ahead in this tournament, and I look at she's been there for the longer haul. She's AEW. I don't see her right now taking another L in a big situation. I want to see her pushed, go forward. I want to be surprised to a degree in at least one of these Owens too. So I did pick Jamie Hayter to Larry yet, or maybe surprise roll up, say what Tony Storm did to a certain doctor. Pick up the win here. At the end of the day, it's about who gets the three. I don't see no submission game at all used here. Nope. Hello, Eric. What do you got? Eric, what you got? 
Okay, th there's a reason why I'm going to say this. I think Jamie Hayter's going to beat Tony Storm for one particular reason. Go ahead. Because if Go they do it. this, Britt Baker and her could be in the semifinals, and then we could get hilarity ensuing. That, or it could be a certain Joker that I hope to see in there, too, versus Jamie Hayter in another one-on-one. -on -one oh, well, I, I do have someone in mind who should be the Joker. Well, we'll, 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 we'll get them. We'll get them. I'll say that. I'll about that. As um, far as this, James? two for Jamie. James, your rebuttal. Uh, I will go. I will pass it to Mike, and then Casey will go last on this. Uh, Mike. Oh wait, do you want to do you want to go, Mike, first, and then me? Uh, it don't matter. Okay, I'll go first, Mike. You'll go after me, just because. Um, You're good, man. Okay, I I'm, I'm gonna go in this case with the more obvious choice. Uh, I, because you kind of gave a good point, but I'm going to go with Tony simply because, um, I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I think there needs to be a different feel for the AEW tournament. I don't think you should go with the same people that you've been seeing every week. And, and granted, I'm fine with either result in this, but I same. could see the, I could see Tony Storm fighting whoever the Joker is, uh, which it could be anybody at this point. There's so many free agents in, in, or in the out women's of AEW. in they or out of AEW. Yeah. In only qualifier. So I, I, I'm going to go with Tony because I, I just think it's Tony just arrived. And I've, uh, and that's another factor. I think it's too early for her to take a loss. I really do. I, I think it's too early. Um, granted, they did do a tag match, and I believe that I believe the baby faces won. I could be wrong on that. Baby faces. Tony won, Storm right. rolled up. Doctor Baker DMD. So this uh, past Friday on Rampage. I could see it the other way, but I'm gonna go with the more big star choice and go casual with it and say Tony Storm. Uh, Mike, you're up. Mike, you're up. So I gotta go with the James E boy on this one. He's right on the money. Make that three. And there we go. Hey, Tony. K Casey. There you go. And uh, by the way, oh, K Casey already said three. He already, he, he agreed oh. with me. Oh. Um, I will say uh, JD also agrees with us, so that makes four. And he said also, match will be fire, though. And that is the truth. <laughs> That's funny. Strong style, stardom levels of competition. These two are going to suplex and lure at the hell of each other. That being said, King, your thoughts on this? I, I mean, I figured I know your pick, but come on, give your thoughts towards this. It is a bracketology, bro. I got to agree with James. Everything he touched on, he took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, we've seen Jamie hated on mostly television almost every single week. Well, whenever Britt's on TV, we see Jamie, or whenever we see Jamie, we see Britt. Hey, I, I agree with this. I mean, Tony just arrived. And it's too early to give her a loss here. So I got to give it to Tony. Even though the match would be good, and I'm fine with either result as well. But I got to give it to Tony on this one. The nice thing about this tournament, most of these matches, I'm fine with them going either way. I don't mind being wrong when at the end of the day, yeah, you yeah, know I agree. both parties deserve it. And you don't know what money on it. In which case, then you'll be mad. Yeah. What, what's that? Unless you're betting money on it, then you'll be mad. Yeah, well, but then, then you're <laughs> stupid. They're yeah. stupid if you bet on pro wrestling. What's wrong with you? I'm, I'm a simple oh, man. Do that, I'm, man. Not a gam I'm a simple man. Teams? I'm not a gambling man. So there you oh, go. Oh fuck, that's right. I, I for forgot. Mention. Forgot DraftKings exists. King, thanks. DraftKings <laughs> with AEW partnership. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? They don't Everybody advertise on it. AEW Dynamite pay per views. So, I get. I got DraftKings on everything. I got you too. Yep. I, I got two things. Uh, AEW is now going to air in Spain on TNT. Yay! Uh, Bien. And Tony Khan claimed that AEW is now the number one promotion in the UK right now, so take of that what you will. I'm that might God. be just a, that that might is, a I have a prediction for the Joker, and who could fight Tony Storm in the semifinals if we're going to go with that route? Again, it depends on what King's next match is. He's yeah, King, King, He's King's, also running, King, King's running. King's yeah, running that shit, man. Like, like King so, decide. King, two down. Continue. Oh man, let's go back to the men. And basically, I'm gonna start on the left side because I'm gonna save that right bracket match for last for the men's side because I feel like that one is personal. If you Always look at it, from a, 
Exactly. So we're going to start back on the man on the left side of the bracket, and we're going to go Ray Phoenix and Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, God. Now, yes, we got Lucha Libre and Technical clashing in this match right here. Now, oh, I, when I, I, look, I know what to call this match. Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. Eric, I'll start with you on this one. Go ahead. Super match versus bone manipulation. That pretty much sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> What happens when a rubber band breaks? What happens when a rubber band breaks? <laughs> yes. What does it take to break a rubber band? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, uh, if we recall correctly, Ray Phoenix broke his arm from a choke slam. <laughs> ah, shit, he's not that much of a rubber band then, huh? Shit. Uh, oh, King, yeah, King, right. save us! Save us, man! Help us! <laughs> oh, uh, Mike, Mike, you're, you're up! <laughs> God! Phoenix all the way. Hmm. All the way. Phoenix. No bullshit. Yeah. No nonsense. It's going to be Phoenix. He makes the most sense. <sighs> Keep him going. I'll I'll be I'm going to go against Mike on this actually and go with Kyle cuz cuz Kyle is the tournament king. Like every tournament I think that Kyle O'Reilly's ever been a part of, he's always made it towards the end or close to the end. He's always in the semifinals or the finals. Every single time. Like, I remember still in WCPW, too, like, even that tournament, I think he made it to, at the very least, the quarterfinals, if not the semifinals. So, it's like, this dude has a knack for going far in these types of tournaments, man. Like, I, I wouldn't bet uh, I wouldn't bet against Kyle just because Ray Phoenix is his opponent. That's just me. Why don't you got a factor in the House of Black and the shenanigans? Yeah, you know, like this could. That's a good call. Yeah, that that could. Just that alone, and you also got to factor in the the elite, the undisputed elite could get involved. Like the Unbox could get involved, Bobby Fish could get involved, Adam Cole could get involved. So there is that. So on his it's eye. like eleven on three. I, I could see. I could see just a war all over the us. <laughs> Because I can see the House of Black trying to interfere against and join forces with the Undisputed Elite just to fend off Death Triangle members. I can oh, see that God, as well. Oh, God, I just had a thought in my head now. I just had a thought. Uh-oh. Oh, God, you can put this in my head. What if the House of Black and the Elite encounter each other and we get Shield White encounter went from UK all those years ago? And then they start, and then Malachi just says we have a common enemy, and they surround Death Triangle, and we get Jurassic Express saving the day. All right. Are you trying to set up an even larger form of blank cut? That's it. That seems like a Russo-like segment, though. That's just way too well, overbooked. Yeah. <laughs> That's way too overbooked when you book it that way. That is way overbooked. Like, you, it, it, look, if you want to say, if you want to give the impression that we're going to get Trio's title soon, that's the way to do it, I think. Ooh. Just we'll talk more about okay. that. that. We'll talk you know more about what? that. But, okay. Well, you make up some. We'll talk more about that a little if bit. If there was any, but, if, you ooh. know what? Now that you brought that up, if there was any time to do a Russo-like booking style, that would be it. It's now. Yeah, that would be it. I could see it. We're saying 18 different trios, according to what we talked about, but yeah. But going back to the uh, Owen here, yeah, again, I just forget about Kyle Riley. He is the tournament specialist. Whether or not we do see shenanigans involved in these Owen matches, whether now or towards the finals, depending on who we think might go forward. Personally, I hope these are pure contests, because again, art, but I digress. But right now, I just feel that that Kyle Riley is going to catch Ray Phoenix out of midair, trap his legs, and try to snap it. With that old man heel hook or that uh, knee bar, Kyle Riley can literally make me Phoenix tap out. It's the mat game that Kyle Riley is more superior again, but he could also have a stiff strike too. If he can slow down Ray Phoenix, Kyle Riley has this one. So I have Kyle Riley going over. I also will add to with a comment from JD Ultra. Uh, JD is in your camp, Mike, and uh, with Kyle not defeating Phoenix. I believe he he said defending, but I think he meant defeating. Uh, so I think he's I think he is going with Ray Phoenix as well. I'm gonna pull a funny and look up. Mr. Gallagher man, your turn to pick. Keep it down in there. I'm... <laughs> what? Um. Yeah, I gotta go with Kyle O'Reilly as well, mainly because he's the fresher face. S- same, same, um, s- same logic as uh, Tony Storm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, fair enough. 
What are we? Uh, Phoenix coming, coming back from injury too, by the way. Just off after qualifying against Dante Martin, and what I hope will definitely be a revisit. What do you got? Who do you got, Ooh, uh, yes. Eric? Who do you got? I got Kyle O'Reilly. In fact, I'm, I'm actually thinking he'll make it to the finals since he has the undisputed backup mm -hmm. and the experience. Mm -hmm. That's and I already have someone else in mind who could fight him. Uh, who do you got, King? Who do you got? I got O'Reilly. I'm in the camp of O'Reilly. Got to in this case. Because, yeah, Ray Phoenix just got back. But also, in, like uh, Casey said, in that same camp of Tony Storm. Got to go with O'Reilly. So that is All right. five to two in favor of Kyle O'Reilly. There you go. <laughs> there luck, you Mike. go. What you got next, <laughs> King? <clears throat> let's go with, since um, Eric brought up Joker, let's do one of the Jokers, shall we? Samoa Joe versus the Joker on the left side of the bracket. Before now, <laughs> I'll now, let you go. Go ahead. <laughs> now, um, um, who would I want to start this off first? Um, James, I'm gonna turn this one to you. I'm actually. Um, who do you I'm, got? Is your Joker? I'm. I'm gonna free pass this over to Mike because I think I think him and I are operating on the same boy that we want to see fight Samoa Joe. Well, James, uh, James, free pass it over to you, Mike. Mike, who you got as your Joker? Honestly, Jeff Cobb. Really, Jeff Cobb? I thought we were going Claudio. <laughs> no, no, I think Cobb would be cooler. That's Cobb's money. Cobb's big money. I could see. He should have won the G1 Damn. last year. I'm still saying that. Tim, you know this is tough because I could see. I actually could see. Cesaro would be great. Listen, Claudio Castagnoli would be fantastic. But Cobb, if they're going to do the Forbidden Door, Cobb's New Japan, right? Yeah. Right. So it makes more sense if you're going to start the Forbidden Door concept mm. to get the big Samoan mm. fuck like the big Samoan fuck. The, you know. It's it's actually crazy because I just brought up on the Jeff Meacham show too that it also could be Jonah as well who just joined New Japan. So I don't damn I, uh, impact wrestling. I yep. don't know if and, and I'm just saying it because New Japan has a very specific booking style of how they do things. I don't think they would put all their eggs in having one of their new guys go up against Joe in that way basket, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that that's, makes sense. that's totally fair, but uh, I still see it could be a possibility. Oh, it, it is a, it, it's an absolutely a possibility. I mean, that's again, crazy. we have two that we can throw up currently, and Cesaro makes the most sense. Claudia would be fantastic in the ring against Joe because goddamn. And Jeff Cobb would be. And Cobb Hopefully. would just work because they're two dudes that would – you Damn, know, you don't have, have a very similar career path. It's crazy because Jonah, uh, Jonah, even though he just left Impact, is, was in Impact, and that would make sense for him and Joe to fight for the television title at some point later down the line. Mm -hmm. And then Jeff Cobb makes sense because the New Japan deal with New Forbidden Door and Cesaro makes sense because of the whole deal with Ring of Honor and his Ring of Honor ties. Oh, uh, it's not as easy as I thought. I don't know. <laughs> We have the Sorry, counter Marvin. solution if we want to oh, Eric. tell a story here. Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. I love story time. Let's go. Okay. So, who is Samoa Joe's opponent that he won the television title for? But I'll pull a swerve on that. Hold on. He who, won it from Minoru Suzuki. Or Suzuki. Yes. So I have the perfect solution. Minoru Suzuki? You get someone who will avenge Suzuki's loss, and there's only one person I can think of. Oh, Sabre Jr. Christopher Daniels. Zach Sabre Jr. Zach Sabre Jr. Zach Sabre Jr.? Oh. Yes. DSJ. Suzuki gone. That would be interesting, too. Damn it! It would be, it would be interesting, but I'm going to tell you why I don't see that happening. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Casey. Brian Danielson just declared his intent to start competing with New Japan. Oh, what, who if is you, it? If you think that they are not going to capitalize on Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr., I want some of what you're smoking. Well, well to be fair, well, to be fair, they could still have an encounter with Brian and Zack Sabre Jr. heading into Double or Nothing. Yeah, that is true. Up from there. That is true. He's not wrong. 
Oh man, oh, there's so many people that could be a part of this. I don't know anymore. No, no, that no, makes no, the tournament no. more engaging, exciting, unpredictable, but still, you're not disappointed. I'm sorry, what are you saying, King? I'm about to say, Noah, go ahead. You kind of been quiet about it a little bit. Who you got as your Joker? Ah, jeez. So again, I think <laughs> about two things. You guys kind of brought up a couple of names that I thought of. I think oh, about. I know who Noah wants. I know who Noah wants. He wants Yano. No, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> No, we don't. <laughs> no, no, no. If, if he, he wants anybody, anybody if, he wants, if, he wants, if he wants anybody, if he wants anybody, he wants pizza. He wants the bunny. No, no. Bunny. Evil. Anyway, evil. Not bad, evil. Not women. evil. Focus. Yeah, no one wants evil. Okay. Uh, that being said. No, no evil. Thank God he's no longer never overweight champion, but I digress. Tom Tonga Loa would be freaking awesome. Uh, I, anyway. I actually put you on screen because I thought you were going to rant about Yano, but go ahead. No, <laughs> no, no. No one wants to hear a rant about freaking Yano this late at night on the East Coast. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I'll save that if I ever do like a freaking rant podcast. That'll be a day. I'll just say that for Stat Boy. Okay, this match. I think about NJPW. <laughs> I think about Ring of Honor. That's the only way I see this working. Samoa Joe, Ring of Honor television champion. He's feuding with Jay Lethal. It's not going to be any favorite guard in that. Jeff Cobb is a former Ring of Honor television champion. Jeff Cobb was one guy I fought up just because of that history. It could actually lead to maybe Joe versus Cobb for the title itself, and the two never faced each other at all, ever, in their respective careers. Claudio, though, yeah, that was the obvious second choice for me because they have past history at Ring of Honor. They faced each other like three or four separate occasions. I'm not sure what the record is between the two, but I wouldn't mind seeing Claudio definitely in AEW, but again, comes down to you start here, or you go from here. That's a whole nother perspective. And like you said, you brought up some key names that also could be involved here. T's and fans to come like Zack Sabre Jr. But I also heard people maybe thinking about why don't you keep within AEW's bubble? Why don't there be a return with somebody like Miro? I'm like, and Miro's doing other stuff, and I don't think he's fully cleared to uh, compete. I think he is cleared. I think he's just doing some TV work. Yeah, he's oh, doing some those... TV work right now. Yeah, oh, he, he's uh, he's on a TV set right now. I don't know what for what show, but all right, Miro's doing I thought, some I thought, stuff. I thought, I thought I they're gonna be uh, on Floor's Lava on Netflix soon. Yeah, yeah Floor's Lava. Yeah, it's. Ooh, I would love to see Miro fight somebody if he's back in time. The best, man, but I digress. So with that being said, I look at it like this. My most obvious joker, it's Claudio. I mean, come on. It's freaking Real of Honor personified. It's Moa Joe versus somebody that's going to bring a worthy fight. I look at everybody else in this roster right now. Nobody else makes sense to me to be the joker within AEW, it seems. And then again, Tony Khan might surprise us because that's what he does. But personally, the Joker, I feel like it would be Claudio. Now, here's the thing. If it is Claudio, it comes down to do you continue building the tension with a former Army of Artemis Jimmy in his own right, longest reigning, in Jay Lethal, where inevitably, I feel we're going to get Jay Lethal versus Moa Joe for that title at Double or Nothing. I don't see it any way unless they do a real bottom pay view the day before Double or Nothing, and honestly, they might do that. Regardless, if my Joker is Claudio... I have Joker going forward because it's Claudio and Claudio versus Kyle Riley. Come on now. King, yes. I think you're the I... only person that didn't speak on this, man. Help me. <laughs> I don't know who, who it could be. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, let's okay. see. Uh, oh, hold on, let me get okay. the list. Uh, oh. uh, let's oh. see. Um, before, I let you, I'm gonna say, before I let you do that real quick, um... I have an obvious Joker in mind, but I have a second one that's way out of the park. I don't think anybody's even said, but I've heard rumblings. The first one I have is, of course, it's Claudio Cesaro. That's the obvious. Now, the second one, this is the way out of left field, because I have heard no one say this name. But what if it's Gargano? Gargano? No. Well, what if they finally say? What if they finally say, "Okay, we're gonna promote the video game with this match." Get Candice LeRae. Candice I mean, LeRae. Both wrestlings in AEW. What the hell? Well, I mean, no one's heard of Gargano in a while. Gargano's been Twitch streaming, and he's been doing a lot of that. I get that, and he said that he doesn't want to well, do anything crazy for that. Oh, but um, it's not that far out of the possibility. Again, he. he 
You're not, you're not, uh, you're not wrong. You might be a little bit how to line around the spectrum of who you might see show up in Bizarre World. That is Long Island, New York, where they already got their hometown boy coming on a stack card. It's also one of those things like, okay, what you know can fit in the show. This show is already stacked as it is. So yeah, right. uh, again, we'll have to wait and see. But it sounds like regardless, we're all going with Joker at this point. I don't yes. know. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's Joker. Um, but I'll stick with it just because Jay Lethal might interfere. So I'll stick I'll with stick that with gut. Yeah, telling it makes you sense. Sense. yeah. I think we're all forgetting one thing regarding the Joker. Yeah. Claudio literally just opened his espresso business. I think he's going to focus on building that for a while before he comes back to wrestling. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Although, that said, it's only one day a week he goes if he decides to go out. Maybe he could not that be there Wednesday, true. hire out, has enough employees to run shop on that day and then come back on to run the shop well, the next day. Well, uh, well Britt Baker also has, a, also has a dental practice, and she closes on Wednesday to do AEW. Keep in mind, this isn't yeah. the fucking other company that doesn't allow outside ventures, Casey. <laughs> He's not that's, wrong. That, again, that's also true, but I also think cesaro is best when he's focused on one specific thing it no, does that, that you know what fact. that's fair i don't even think about that uh, so, well, uh, if, if, we, if we got kyle riley going over though because remember whoever wins here allegedly in our predictions will face kyle riley you gotta figure it's gonna be someone that's gonna be as much as a mat based specialist or violent hitter yes and that leads me to my predictions for the joker Ooh. my what obvious you got? Pit, my "Quote unquote obvious pick." I'm going with Mike here and saying Jeff Cobb, because Jeff Cobb and Samoa Joe just prints its own money in marketing. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's never been done before. They, they have not no. faced each other in and one plus, on one action. You O'Reilly would have a fucking fantastic match against Cobb anyway, because yes. Matt Smith versus Big Big Hoss will work beautifully yes. to begin. Okay. Yes. No, I know I said sexy. Would you... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Now to my out of left field pick, my secondary pick. Can you imagine the pop if, and I pray, I don't necessarily think this would happen, but it would be amazing if he's back in time to pull this roll off. Joe's in the ring. He's waiting yes. for his opponent. Yes. And all you hear is little V Mills. Oh my Boy, god, can't... Omega! Oh, that's... Boy, you can't... Dude, if he's here... Can't... I was you about to say, I nobody know. Well, that's the thing. You could have fooled me with how he looks, because uh, uh, I saw him recently. Oh man, if it is Kenny, oh, there's too many. <laughs> I thought there was so one. Oh, no, there's like welcome five. Welcome to, one, welcome to one of the most. Welcome to one of the most unpredictable tournaments in pro wrestling. Well, no, like, one of the most oh, unpredictable oh, tournament. Okay, you know what? Well, Here's we, all, we all got. We all got crazy aspirations, but it sounds like in most favors. Yeah, crazy favors, left field prediction. Yeah, it's but it sounds Jeff like in most favors. Just thinking about the, the context here, we see we feel like it's going to be Joker because Small Joe is going to get somehow screwed by Jay Lethal. Okay, I I'm calling uh, audible rapid fire segment. Best three picks for the for the Joker. Casey, go three picks. Go, uh, just so just, we, just, we're clear. All right, all right. Uh, Cobb, Omega, Saber Junior. Uh, King. <laughs> Cobb, Gargano, and Omega. Okay. Uh, K uh, Eric. Junior, Cobb, Claudio. Okay. Noah. Cobb, uh, Claudio, Junior. Cobb, Claudio, Junior. Mike. Cobb, Cobb, Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> He's here with his boy. And that's where he stands. Uh, I'm, and I'm his gonna story and he's sticking to it. I'm gonna stick with my original thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with. Uh, yeah, Mike convinced me. Uh, primary Cobb, secondary Cesaro, and third Jonah. You just if if you're booking a big old tournament and you have a pay per view that's coming up in the future, yeah, or this big huge forbidden door that's gonna be opened. Cobb and Cobb and fucking Joe have so much in common. It's crazy. They are. Li it's literally the same person from two different timelines. That's what it is. Yeah, true. 
All right. I got an out of nowhere idea. Go ahead. To be fair, Cobb is facing Willie Mack on the United Empire New Japan America special in Philadelphia on the 15th. So, again, he won't be far. What do you what do you got, Eric? If you want to go Eric. really left field, uh, let's see. Um, oh, boy. He has a history with Samoa Joe, a very brief one. They teamed together a little bit. Uh-huh. And he never forgets. Me? He never forgets. He never forgets, and he has had a brief history with Joe. They teamed so it's me. You're you're saying I'm going to be showing up at AEW? Yeah, because uh, the, the oh. first person I thought was Mike, actually, because he did legitimately have oh. history with him. Okay, who's the character on TV that always said he never forgets? Me. I always say I never forget. Right. It's literally my gimmick. A wrestler. <laughs> a a wrestler. A not C- Mike, not C-A-W wrestler, even though you I met at my RL. But I'm an actual fucking wrestler. What are you talking okay. about? I know! <laughs> wrestler. We're going well, the let me give you the next no. biggest obvious hint. Go ahead. Pat McAfee mentioned him on TV. Wait, Pat McAfee's in the E. He, he mentioned this person on TV at Backlash. Oh, uh. Wait, why? Oh. Yes! Oh! Let him in. Mm. Yeah. I think that's I out of I feel like Rotunda's done with wrestling for the long haul. <laughs> He's just going to focus on movie production. I don't blame him. You will never have a man that was more screwed by professional wrestling than, than him. Wyndham, yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he had gold for you, Vince, and you threw I'm a, it away. I'm gonna stolen. be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. The, uh, uh, AEW kind of already has their Wyndham in Malachi Black, so Malachi, I wouldn't. Yeah, you know, I would love to see the two the team up, Black. but uh, I just don't see it. I mean, I, I, again, never say never. Wait and see. Yeah. All right, guys, can keep moving forward. What we got next? What we got next is that we're gonna do another Joker, but for oh. Britt Baker's case. Mm. <laughs> so, but this one, I'm gonna let uh, Jay. No, not Jay. You already started off first, didn't you? Yeah, you started him off with the men's Joker. Yes, I did. Um, Different person. Different person. A must be chosen. Uh, Casey, let's go with you. Who you got is your Joker for the women's side to face Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Hmm. We got uh, we got quite a few fun yeah, ones. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. In and out of AEW again. Yep. Yeah. Uh. My first thought is probably. You know, I'm probably going to go against the grain here because I, I legitimately don't know what she's up to these days. You go for it. I'm going to say, Merce- I'm going to say Mercedes Martinez. He, she's a uh, current Ring of uh, Women of Honor uh, or Ring of Honor Women's World, World Champion. Champion. So, is she? Yeah. Yes, she, she, she is. is. So, it, mean, it literally happened on Dynamite. What last week? It yeah, did last week. Yeah. The main event against the Virtuosa made her uh, tap out to the Dragon Sleeper after Dion tried to bite her arm, preventing her from doing it. That, Hell of a match. Ooh. Dude, yeah. that dude, okay. she did a surfboard stretch and then a dragon sleeper, and I thought she was about to break Diana in half, bro. Yeah. Dude, that was that was no not that was no bend. bodies are not meant to bend like that. She, Good grief. She's like, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do the typical dragon sleep. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mix Rey Mysterio and turn it into Undertaker badass. I'm gonna take care of some business. Take care of business. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I think I got another one. Go ahead. What you got? I got a little bad streak going in my head. Let's throw Miranda Gordy into this mix. Ooh! Okay. Okay. Mm. I like that. Like that. I like, like that. that man. I like that. I got. I got she's a. Power, she's the powerhouse of that trio too. I could see that. I got. I got one. I got one in mind. There's. There's a couple in mind actually. Um, then go ahead, James. One is Willow Nightingale because she impressed the shit out of me. Uh, I definitely agree. She is incredible. Yes. Uh, the other one that could be a full-on surprise, I legitimately could see this being Deanna Perazzo's spot. 
Yep. I yep. could see that. I could see. I could see this as like her redemption arc and and continuing the story of her vicious streak that started at uh under siege not too long ago on Saturday. So I could see Diana in this spot. And man, could you imagine what a statement it could freaking be if she just kicked the shit like and it you know what? If the, if they do it this way, I will take back everything I said about Britt Baker's promo at, at Britsburg because I thought it was stupid for her to bury the whole division. If the whole Ooh, reason she cut that yeah. promo was for Deanna to come in and say, you talk too much and kick the fucking shit out of her, I'm for it. Because that would be a hell of a way to introduce somebody to the, to the it mainstream. It would be, but uh, may I allow for a surprise pick? Go ahead. Go ahead, Casey. And, and, uh, and uh, again, this is one I don't necessarily know what what she's up to what's piper ellering up to these days Ooh, um yeah. piper piper ellering or do you mean rachel ellering oh uh, sorry uh, yeah sorry oh uh, yeah uh, is- Ooh. Ooh. she's a free she, agent right now she's a free, yeah she yes yes she is i can see agent. i can see rachel i can see rachel too Ooh, there's a lot uh eric the what about you strong smile eric <laughs> yeah, that's oh that's what i'm gonna go Go dream booking a little bit here. Oh, uh, uh, here we go. The Joker oh, select, and she fights someone. Fights the person in the semifinals. Here's here's the best way to elude it. It's a forbidden door element, and we go for the undisputed May Young winner championship. Who? Oh, Storm won the won the second one. Who won the first? Oh, you're gonna bro- you're gonna run back Kyrie and fuck oh, Kyrie, Kyrie Kyrie Sane. Oh yeah. man! And we kickstart Stardom's deal with AEW because Ooh. they had the talks. Well, I mean, I like I'm... where your head is at with that one. I like that. Uh, well, Bueller. I don't think they're in talks because Bushiroad owns both New Japan and Stardom. I think I think the talks are. Over. I think they're a part of the deal. Just saying. <laughs> pretty much, just pretty much, it's just you know, black and white at then, this point. Then why, not go, gray. then why not go out of left field? Why not throw in say Mayu Watami or Yuka Sakazaki? Ooh. See, I was thinking Mayu well, Watami because she well, talked about Yuka winning the SWA championship. Yeah, 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 yeah Yuka yeah, Sakazaki's out. Qualified match on Friday against Riho. Yeah, she. I think yeah. she's in Tokyo Joshi, isn't she? Yeah, she's back. In, she's back over there now. Yeah, which dude? Good match. AEW's got a lot of freaking partnerships. I didn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Three deals with, with 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 Japan wrestling promotions. Yeah, exactly. That, actually, four. Uh, I I guess if you count um, uh, Noah. No, wait. Is that three? Yeah, because well, no. If you count Stardom as a separate brand than New Japan, I guess. Watch. Yeah, uh, Bowser, you got a separate. But anyway. Because uh, DD, um, remember, DDT, Noah, New Japan, and Stardom. Now we just need to get All Japan, and we're like, holy shit. <laughs> like, bro, what the hell's going on? Just saying. But Mike, uh, your pick for the Joker for Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Or Gail Kim. I, I don't know. She's retired. We dude. want <laughs> retired, but not done. Like, if you want to get someone from Impact, there I would say no just such a- thing as retired in professional fucking wrestling. No, that's that is true. true. Looking at, looking at you, Mick. Person probably meant it, but then they took it back because blood money was too too enticing. Yeah, Shawn Michaels, thanks. Uh, well, I was about to yeah, say yeah, uh, before Mick Foley and Shawn Michaels. Hi, Terry Funk. How's your how's your sixty eighth retirement going? <laughs> <laughs> Harry Funk, the only man to have retired more times than years he has lived. Yes. That's something. Good lord. I'm hey, just I think saying. the only one that could beat him in the retirement department is Ric Flair at this point. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. Fair. yeah. yeah All I'm saying is, is that Brick has a very loud mouth. And if you want to prove how loud yeah. her mouth can get, if she can get Gale out of retirement, she can do fucking anything. Yeah, that's, that's true. 
Ooh, yeah. Not saying, okay. not saying that it's likely, but if we're going to talk about a wild card, that would come out of so fucking far of left field, nobody would ever see it coming. You talked about you talked about an impact star, uh, Eric. Who, who do you have in mind? And you also yeah, want, to, want to have someone throw hands. She was in the Royal Rumble. Oh, Mickey James too. Mickey. Oh, this is more. Oh, this is more but, unpredictable. My brain hurts. Here comes the problem: is Mickey still under contract with the Fed? Because if she no is, like, Impact, she's with Impact. No, that was yeah, that was his partnership between Impact and the Fed. That was, okay, well, I'm just making sure. Let's see, how, let's see how that's going so far. Let's check. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing uh, since the Rumble. Got it. Nothing. Oh, since nothing. The Hey, hey. oh, also, there may be. She also, she also still works in the NWA. <laughs> there's potential that WWE not might not be stubborn asses, and it's gone. <laughs> Don't worry, Mickey James still believes that that partnership is still going strong. This partnership, oh, in this partnership <laughs> is long gone, just like the ex girlfriend who will never return. Yeah. <laughs> It's almost as strong as her husband's fucking ego. Ooh. Oh. God damn. Oh, nobody no, no, no. can. Let me tell you, Roy. Right now, nobody, no one here can beat Nick Aldis. Shut the fuck up, bag. Shut Dead. Matt Cardona would have eaten Nick Aldis's lunch. Should have done business while you still had the title, you stubborn dick. It's true. It's true. It's true. So Eric, who you got? I told you, Kyrie saying. Oh, Kyrie oh yeah. Kyrie, okay, yes. okay. Noah. So we kickstart. No, you, you are you're the only one that hasn't Noah, given you've something. Been, Go you've ahead. been quiet about this one. Damn. Okay. <laughs> well, he well he's in James's well, position. They're that, stumped. Man. Well, I mean, it's not so much, you know, I'm stumped. It's, again, the possibilities. I look at stardom. I think about Mario Tommy's recent statement, winning the SWA championship off of a Fegla and a great match, who's now going to go after the high-speed championship, I think, held by Asume. In a way that the IWGP United States championship is like a gateway or a ticket to America, in Tanahashi's words, I think that Mayu, who wants to mix it up here, feels that necessarily the SMA title could uh, bring her uh, over here. And being a former Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, I could definitely see Mayu Tommy being a surprise to show up. After all, she was involved, James, at G1 Supercard that you saw against the gatekeeper, Kelly Klein. Yes. I also think about Impact Wrestling, I think about, you know, the depth of, again, their knockouts division. The likes of maybe Masha Slamovic showing up out of nowhere as a joker, oh. taking on the Doctor, who's currently undefeated right now in Impact Wrestling, but really hasn't been tested since, again, another joker you all alluded to, Virtuosa, Dion Perrazzo. Everybody wants that match. I know the match hasn't happened yet, and Dion Perrazzo and Britt Baker have only faced each other on three, four other separate singles occasions, and right now it is two and two uh that being said i watch think about all, maybe watch us all turn out to be wrong watch us all turn out to be wrong in this well that's the, part uh, of the fun right and the joker you... and the joker was actually say killer kelly oh i love that i will pass out in happiness knowing that she's oh back God. here in the states professionally oh, that's so oh torturous. I got asia torturous. kong asia kong comes back <laughs> I thought Kong would be an interesting one, but nah. I got something yeah. torturous her idea. Knee, her knees are gone. Do not say but, wait, Eric. Like, you say wait, Maki Ito. He, he has a, uh, something to interrupt. If you say Maki Ito. I got a better idea for PTSD-induced flashbacks. Do not say Maki but, Ito. Oh, no. Do not say it. There are eight million ways to die. She's one. There are eight million ways to die. Awesome die. Kong. Awesome Kong. I know. Uh, I don't she's, think that's going to happen. Listen, Gail, listen, 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 listen. Just everyone off. Yeah, no, listen. Well, again, he's... Listen. It's your chaos. Listen, Go ahead man. real quick. Gail Kim has a better shot than Awesome Khan at coming out of retirement, bro. She's... I, I agree. She... I agree with that. Listen, Gail Kim can still go if she wants to. Awesome Khan can't and was recommended by doctors not to. There's a huge difference here. Right. right. Gail's been taking I, mm -hmm. a lot of time off to fucking heal. Pretty much. Yeah. Completely. And push forward. And push forward. Like, impact wrestling, particularly the knockouts division. Yeah, she Thank she's you. the writer of uh, uh, the knockouts division, as far as I know, yeah. or the booker. Mm -hmm. Pretty much management. 
Yeah. Uh, what she's doing I, a great job, by the way. Keep the shit up. <laughs> uh, seriously. Thank you, Gail. Um, that being said, I think about, you know, we talk about the free agents that are available now. With so much promise. We, we threw names like uh, Candace Wrestling out there, Candace LeRae. We think about others that are out there, Dakota Kai, that would make Casey's day. Uh, Nixon Newell, Tia Knox. We think about uh, Athena, per se. I also think about maybe somebody within AEW itself that has history with the doctor, but with a new attitude and a new uh, persona, can she actually go over on her and surprise us and further Brit's conspiracy theory? I fear about Chris Statlander because I would like to see Chris Statlander and Jamie Hader mix it up now. As especially a, as with, a uh, yeah, but as a joker, Chris's though? new attitude. I feel like as a joker, though. Well, again, I don't know what Tony Khan, how far Tony Khan is going to span out. Again, again, guys, you got to consider what's also on his roster, too. It wouldn't be the first time he's done something like that to a degree. Yeah. He's only had all forms of wrestling. Oh, God. But, oh, God. I got another person in mind that will definitely make James piss. Oh, God. Well, who would that it. be? Go ahead. We get Big Swole back. No. No. That's no. Too That's too no. Far. That's too far. That's too far. Zero. That's too far. Nada. That's, that's no. Too far. Good. Right. Stay I'm away uh, with ACH I'm down. I'm down. on your shitty little podcast on the shitty little internet. <laughs> Stay the fuck away from Tony Khan, you bitch. <laughs> fuck and that. We just, and we just got off the rails. Mike, we're going on That's the nope train. Like. Get on that fucking nope train. Good. Nope. All right. Calm down, brother. Calm down. It, it, it's all good. He just had to do that with you. It's all I know, good. I know, I know, I know. I know Rachel Elming would be another name, too, but I know she left Impact on weird terms. I have no idea what's next for her, but I think that'd be a promising match, too. But as far as I feel that could be my um, primary Joker, I personally would love to see her mix it up with uh, Mayu Itami being a former Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. And I don't believe Mayu and Britt have ever faced each other also uh, in rings. So yeah. I'm actually going to go along with that. But if Tony Khan keeps it inside the roster, yes. my first ballot pick is Chris Statlander. Oh, man. Ah, uh, there's so many. All right. Yeah. All right, King. Majesty. Yeah, I was about to say, King, you're you're oh. you're up now. Good luck. 60% of the series can say Maki Ito. No, actually, this is the one. Oh, thank God. I was going to say, because James would have slandered her. So, I am not going to make James mad on this. No, no. In fairness, fairness, I'm sure Maki Ito is a lovely person. It's just that segment sucked, and I hate it. (laughs) But um, if I have to go with, I got got one obvious, one wild card. Um, The obvious, in my opinion, is Athena. That is my obvious. Mm. Now, oh, right. the I wild mean, card. I totally forgot about her. Mm-hmm. You? The wild card. I've seen Britt's Twitter. Not, tw- oh, not Twitter, but Instagram. She did tease a photo of three women who were standing behind the X outside in the Performance Center on Orlando, Florida. Those three women were Dakota Kai, Candice LeRae, and Tegan Knox. Hey, now, yeah. out of the but three, Dakota's who I would still take, on no compete. That's right. That is right. And the, Dakota is still on the thirty day no compete okay. call. That is correct. So, um, All right, I, gotta go with, I gotta go with Candace. I got Candace as my wild card. Fair enough. So now it just comes down to this, gentlemen. Regardless, we named like twenty different jokers across all of wrestling. Do we see Brett name. losing I, in the opening round? Name. Do we see Brett? I got Brent? another name. Go ahead. What's your next name? Okay. Tony Khan's actually been trying to contact her, say, hey, can we do this thing with you in Ring of Honor again? Who? Maria Canales. Ooh, Ooh Maria. Maria's a fair shout, too. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. She hasn't wrestled in a long time, either. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't bad when she actually needed to wrestle. Uh, let me see. Should and be right. her and Britt have not faced each other at all. I see. I see Britt losing uh, if if it's, it, but it depends on the name. Exactly. Oh, I agree. Yeah. It depends on the name. Okay. Yeah, and I think and I think the only name that works in this case, based on everything y'all said, is the virtuosa Diana Perazzo. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. So, let's rapid fire and then pick who wins. Uh, uh King, go. Rapid fire. Three three picks um, and then who wins? 
Perrazzo, Athena, Candice. I got Perrazzo as obvious. I think Deanna wins. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on all that. Uh, King. Or King, listen to me. Eric! Eric! I bet Eric! <laughs> Trying to pull up freaking John Silver. Are you saying uh, Candice LeRae or Deanna Perrazzo? I'm going with the Joker. Okay, uh, Casey, who you got? Uh, uh, Perazzo, Ellering, uh, Itami, and I'm going with Perazzo winning. Okay, uh, well, uh, Joker winning. Uh, Noah. Uh, Perazzo, Itami, Statlander, Joker wins regardless. Uh, Mike. Um, Gail, Perazzo, and... Oh, fuck. Um, I'll just leave it blank for right now, and I'm going to say that Britt's going to win. Okay. So um, I have to believe that Doctor's going to win. Uh, there you go. Um, there you go. Uh, you could go. You want to go Candace? Because she has free agent right now. Yeah. Right okay. All right. There you go. All right, there we go. We got the Jokers out of the way. That was the longest part of the fucking podcast for sure. <laughs> and the Jokers, again, are so unpredictable because of the fact we are in a forbidden door world when it comes to AEW. Anyone can show up. I love it. I How wrestling should be, honestly. Uh, Eric, uh, King, mm-hmm. what we got next on the Bracketology? All right, the Bracketology. On the right side, we got Riho taking on Ruby Soho. Oh, crap. Now... Riho's, Riho's first match back with Yuka Sakasaki, that was pretty good on Rampage. I loved mm. it. This is what happens if Tony Khan could put more focus on the women's division in AEW. I feel like that was their breakthrough to basically let's get this train moving forward because they got a, they got a stacked ton of women, very talented women on that AEW women's roster. It's just basically putting in the like, – continuity and consistency of booking it going forward Agreed. which i felt like rampage on friday night was the breakthrough so and then plus of ruby soho we've seen ruby on dark dark elevation and dynamite on all three shows and including rampage as well but i feel like here this is where i'm really split because i'm going to, i'm going to go first here and i you know this is my first time going first so and this is where i'm split between these two because Riho just came back but Ruby needs momentum here. So. He's also lost uh, a previous tournament. Exactly. So if I were to nail it down that way. Sorry, Riho. I like you. Glad you're back. But. I'm going with Ruby Soho. I'm going with hmm. Ruby Soho here. Um, Eric, who you got? Ruby Soho for the same reasons that you, you said. Like, as much as we like Rio. It, it gotta go to Ruby Soho. She needs some more momentum. And plus, with her storyline with Tony Storm, Britt Baker, and Jamie Hayter, it could really be in the finals. She could make it to the finals. Uh, I'm gonna go last on this one. Noah, go. I mean, Noah. pretty much summed it up because at the end of the day, she was in that TBS uh, Championship Tournament and lost out. Rico right now, I wonder with the new attire, is she adopting maybe a subtle new attitude? And with a loss, maybe further turn her heelish and figured about again maybe i'll have jamie Hayter versus ruby soho maybe uh brit somehow makes the way and you get after i stadium revisited or you get some sort of unique first time affair with chris and uh, ruby towards the finals but over quarter finals per se you get a first time with uh sheeta and uh ruby and i guess velvet now as a baddie has a whole different contrast too everything about this feels like right now that ruby needs this win whether or not she wins is still to be said and again if ruby goes heel That'll be the difference. But right now, I feel Ruby needs to win this. Okay. Uh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh, yeah, Casey, okay. go. Uh, Mike, either... Yeah, Mike, go. Uh, Mike, Ruby. Go. I was going to say, uh, do you want Mike to go or Casey? Uh, Casey. Uh, he said Mike Mike said Ruby, so I think he just Casey, summed it up simply as that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, go ahead, Casey. Casey I, I don't know what else you want, so just leave it at that. Let's start a riot! Ruby, right? There okay, there you go. Uh, Soho, Soho's old name. Uh, all right, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a wild card at you all here. We have seen them do this before, but never in a tournament. What if they do a time limit draw here? That's my Whoa. official prediction. Oh, 
get eliminated? Yeah, either Red oh. Velvet or either Red Velvet or Hikaru Shida is getting a buy. That's my prediction. No, no, we bring back the judge system. They were gonna do. Ooh, ooh, I could see that. I could see that too. They need to start doing that more. I like. I like that they add yes. the judge systems into it. Come into play, which it hasn't since Full Gear or that other uh, championship match. It's still a nice element to think about. I like that. Yeah, that, that I can see that. I can see that a whole lot. Um, they would still, be a banger too if they do go 20 minutes to a draw. Either way, um, it, it okay. So I, what I will say is, they're both my primary because this is a very tip iffy situation. I'm gonna say Ruby wins, but. Time limit draw is my number one pick because I, 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 for some reason, I just don't see them bringing back the judges for a tournament match. I think so they only say that for temper. Gonna win, huh? Vacant's gonna win. Yes, Vacant's gonna win. That's a true winner. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Vacant will win. I don't know. I, it, it's weird because I feel like they only do those for championship matches. They do. Which, once, that's Cody why, that's Derek. why, yeah, so, you know what, uh, they did that, 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 Eric, they did it for Heyman and Brian Danielson, too, remember? Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, they're both primary, I'll stick, I'll say Soho if, if, if there will be a winner, but I'm, if I'm, I will win if I, if my time of a draw wins, because I, I genuinely think this could go to a draw here. It would be uh, thing to see in one of these matches in the Owen. Oh, there you go. All uh, right. What do we got, King? We got Red Velvet and Hikaru Shida. We got Batty versus a, a warrior. warrior who I, a, a warrior I feel like going into this after her match with Deeb weeks ago in Philly probably still be banged up. Now, ah, uh, I'll weird. save my pick for last. Noah, go. I mean, the last time Hikaru Shida faced Red Velvet one on one, she beat her in 12 seconds. Now Red Velvet has adopted a brand new attitude as a baddie, much to your and James pleasing. I think about Hikaru Shida's health, like you said. How well is her knee regarding that crazy street fight with Serena yeah. Deeb? And will Red Velvet exploit it in defeat or in victory? Will Kiara Hogan be in her corner too, like an AEW Dark? If I look at this tournament, I got Ruby Soho going forward. She's the face. I guess you kind of need, you know, that heel that will do anything it means to win or make a statement in contrast. So, thinking about that, I actually think that history's still going to repeat because I feel like I'm just going to beat her up after the match. I got Sheeta going forward because Sheeta and Ruby's the bigger match to me. Sheeta. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, you made a good point. Shit. I Very Sheeta. good point. Yeah, Sheeta. I gotta go, Sheeta. Two O Sheeta, uh, Mike. Sheeta. Three O Casey. Double DQ. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, so the finals on the left side? <laughs> the fuck, <laughs> Casey? What? <laughs> Explain. Explain. Because, okay. because, because number one, Sheeta has that bad knee going in, and Red Velvet has the history of getting beat by Sheeta in 12 seconds. Yes. We also, however, know that Sheeta is a warrior among warriors, and she's not going to let a... <clears throat> a little thing like a bad knee get in the way of her dream. It's a case of the Im irresistible force and the immovable object. Okay. And the only thing giving in that situation is the ref. Interesting contrast, pushing Sheeta beyond her limits emotionally to the point she maybe doesn't answer the five count. Dude, if Casey's, uh, I... if Casey's pick comes true and my pick comes true, what the fuck do you do? Does that mean does that mean oh. the left side is the final? <laughs> what the much. hell happened? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you eliminated oh, oh, one oh, oh, oh. half of the tournament. What the hell? Well, that guys, that, that was... well, guys, that's I, a tournament. I, that's a wrap. What a tournament. I, well, I mean, to be fair, Owen Hart, he was a bit of a hothead, so there's that. Not yeah. to mention, and not to mention, 
one of the all-time great ribbers in the history of the Oh industry. my god, what a rib that yeah. would be. You fucking me. Oh on, my god. On us oh. wrestling fans too, that'd be the ultimate rib. The Owen Hart's like looking down on us. He's like, hey, 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 what was that you... phrase I had? Enough is enough and it's time for a change. Godspeed, you <laughs> fucking prick. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's out the mouth. I know, I know what's gonna happen with my prediction. Right. Man, you're the only one left, so go, go for, for it. it. Go for it. Okay, here's the best way to describe it. James is gonna see this match. Is gonna be like, wow, look at all the lack of diversity going on here. Oh lord, here we go. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because oh yeah. Oh, I didn't even. I haven't used no, no, no. that line in a bit. We're not, we're not going down. Not oh, I'm going. I'm going down there. He brought it up. He brought it up. I got it. Big swole. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, go ahead. Nice one, Eric. But seriously, yeah. you're pick. Okay, so Red Velvet has the 12 second history, but she can all. And, and here's the thing. I think Red Velvet is going to win via DQ because she's going to try and go to her car mm. about losing that match as well. That is true. About to Serena D. Because now, but think, because think about it. Red Velvet can say, sure, I lost in 12 seconds, but if I beat, but if at least I'm not the person that lost the number one contendership. That's true. Mm. That's true. That's a good one. And Serena D is going to fight our. Favorite Thunder Rosa, who yeah. now follows me on Twitter, so I get the win here. Well, she also follows me too, but again, it's not me about, it's about wrestling. Uh, that being said, stay tuned, folks. HW Crew will be back predicting and previewing double or nothing once the card is known too. Yeah, uh, that exactly. being said, so it looks like everybody pretty much is practically unanimous here with Sheeta, with the exception of eliminating both via DQ and uh, Red Velvet exploiting. So, Gang, you wanted to be last, so who do you got? I got Sheeta winning. Yes, Red Velvet will exploit that knee, but I have uh, Sheeta winning. But she's not going to go far in the tournament. Not going to go far at all. I don't. I, yeah. Again, Sheeta is going to have bad blood coming after her, yeah, regardless. Gonna, yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know the way. Yeah, I just realized. So I love this. I just realized something. Go What's ahead. up? What up? What if they start to use this match to build Jay Cargill versus Hikaru Shida for double or nothing? For the TBS championship? I could yeah. see that. I could see that. Okay. I didn't even think about that. And that could be Shida. the person that takes it off for, honestly. Shida Cargill for, for the Hose championship? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Don't bring that up. God love you, Charles Wright. He's still alive. <laughs> Why'd you point to the heavens? He's what? still alive. I, I can't see him from where he is. Oh, okay. Oh, because he's hey, oh, because he's high. Lord. Oh, because 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 he's high. What? God, oh, God, God, this God, God. Fuck. God. Before we get to the last match, I have an announcement to make uh, regarding this Owen Hart tournament. Oh, now if if you have followed me on Twitter, I have been I had talked about the idea I had in my head. And I've been like uh, getting it out there, and I've made a let's see, see the March Madness for all you sports fans out there. You know how the March Madness happens every year, and they have the bracket challenge, and the uh, winner gets the per like whoever gets the perfect bracket earns one million dollars in cash prizes. Correct? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, what King is doing, what I'm doing, is we're gonna do the Owen Hart bracket challenge mm. it's on my uh, it's on my twitter if you guys don't if you guys follow me y'all know where to y'all know where to post is that if you don't my twitter is amt x x i i i like that's the normal normal 23 with the number 23 so Pacific. so um yeah if you if you can get like uh, there and both of the brackets i have made are in my twitter post so what you need to do is that you got until Wednesday. You got until tomorrow's dynamite before it goes on the air. Well, today's and, dynamite for us. Well, East today's for, for you, OC East Coast, for us, for me, Central folk over here, Central Time Zone. Um, if you can get the perfect bracket for both men 
and women, if you choose to participate, you will get an AEW shirt of your choice on Ooh. me from Pro Wrestling Tees. Okay, I'm 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 going for it. Where where's your Twitter? Ah. It's <laughs> Fox. Okay. Like you need more free merch. Just remembered something. Go ahead. You remember? Noah, uh, you're in trouble. You're in trouble, man. Wait. What did I You do? said last year we were going to have the ultimate draft em up contest where you would give oh. us $100 of Pro Wrestling Tees gift card. You did, you did say, say that, that last year, and you, you did Stray! say that last year, and you never fall through. So now I'm the one who's going to have to take over this. But anyway. That's not a bracketology, angry monkey from Family Guy. That was something else that I was doing called a seasonal type family tree pay per views. And we only talked about it. Though. By the way, you never did it. By Look, the... you want to try You want to try and start something? Talk to me the day after double or nothing, and we'll draft the AW roster. By the way, I, I, typed, oh. I typed in the live chat uh, King's, King's uh, Twitter just in case you couldn't follow along yes. for words. James, yes, James is typed it in my, typed in my Twitter name onto the live chat. Go in there if you want to participate. Remember to save the two photos that I have customized for both men and women. And also, if you get one or both jokers correct on both sides of the bracket, that is extra points added to if you got the perfect bracket, like basically. So if you want to do that, go ahead. You got until Dynamite on the East Coast. Today's Dynamite on the Central Time Zone. You got till tomorrow's Dynamite before it goes in the air on TBS. And, and all, you will get if you get. The, I highly and suggest. You will get, I highly suggest to everybody right here on the call uh, that actually has a decent sized following, retweet it and pin to your thing. Because I just I just uh, retweeted it uh, and I'm gonna pin it to my wall or I'm gonna try to anyway. I think you have to quote tweet. So try and pin it to your wall. I mean, it's not that difficult, bro. Get involved. All right, yeah, you have to you have to quote tweet. So make sure you quote tweet yeah, it when quote you quote tweet. Everybody get everybody get involved. This is your chance to get a AEW shirt of your choice by me, ooh, which ooh. I will personally buy for you of your choice on Pro Wrestling Tees. Let's do you it. You got bro. like the the bracket. You got then and the I will pick the winner on Monday, May 30th, which is the after which is the Day of after double or nothing. I will pick the winner. Just if you got the perfect bracket, just send it to me in the DM and basically um give me your um name. Give me your name and then your address. That's all I need. Real quick, uh I assume the closest uh the getting the perfect bracket will win, correct? Yes, the closest, the closest uh the closest. Or if you get the perfect one, closest or perfect. Cool. All right. So y'all know. Um Participate in the fun, because I had no idea until just now. Uh, I'm cool with it, because that means free shit, and I'm joining them too. You bet your ass I'm joining them. Uh, okay, because you're, you're a broke ass white boy, right? Yeah. In fact, I'll I'll make sure everybody that predicted here will be in the uh, in the chat. Uh, and if there's and uh, oh another thing, if multiple people get the closest bracket or even the perfect, I will do a spin the wheel like Wheel of Fortune. I will do spin the wheel. And yep. whoever it lands on, uh, make sure you follow me, and I'll D, uh, DM me your perfect bracket or close to the perfect bracket, and we'll get things started right away on your uh, free shirt. Cool. On me. Good deal, Sweet. man. A very optimistic uh, venture you're trying to start here with a profitable uh, victory. There you go. Exactly. Now, let's talk about the last match, which, like I said, I saved this one for the last. Yeah, I wonder why. This right here if you want if you follow dax harwood on twitter and watch his promo two minute and 20 second promo that right there was heartfelt that right there basically had i almost had me in tears a little bit mm. and Action this man how, has for professional wrestling it, it, yes and who has dax said that who is his favorite wrestler all time oh Bret just Hart. the best there is the best there was and the best there ever will be and then you got the other one on the other side and you got, and you got, on the other side you got basically the man who was down there in the black and gold era of that company who was not to mention um, his favorite you know, wrestler is Shawn michaels 
Um, so basically, when you look at this, folks, this is basically Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart in um, 2022. Let's between, go. <laughs> let's go. Between Adam Cole and Dax Harwood. Um, I'm going to just jump in whenever I feel like it because this one is too good of a match to where I feel like, yeah, this is going to be my match of the night. So, Mike, I'm going to start with you. Um, You know what? Toss it to James real quick. I want to get his opinion on it more. Oh, uh, hey. man. Okay, so when you when you talked about it earlier, you got a person who is a, who is a big fan of Shawn Michaels and actually worked personally with Shawn Michaels. And you got a man who's a big fan of Bret Hart and as, is now working personally with Bret Hart, even if it's not in an official AEW capacity. You add those two and the knowledge of their feud that they had back in the day... And, uh, I think you're going to get a very, uh, uh, you're definitely going to get a, I, I, there's two things I'll predict. One, you're definitely getting a Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels tribute match. Uh, no and doubt. that one, no uh, doubt. <clears throat> number, number two, this match is going to fucking rule. I'm with King on that. And my official pick, who oh, I'm going to go the heat route because Dax and Cash, just FTR in general, have been on a massive roll lately. Adam Cole, while he's been on a roll in and of itself, I think he needs a little bit more momentum than Dax does. So I'm going to go with Adam Cole because I think he's going to be one of these guys that goes all the way to the semifinals or the finals even. So I'm going to go with Cole. Um, I'm, I'm, I got to. I got to go with Cole. Um... Just, I think it makes the most sense with him. So there you go. All right, Mike? you got James. You got James Potts. How would Danhausen say this? Uh, Danhausen uh, uh, chooses the baby man. Yes. <laughs> Who's the baby man? Adam what? Cole. Who's uh, the baby? Man? Yeah. I mean, he he does have a baby face. But fair enough. <laughs> no, but like, but he's called he's Adam Cole, baby, right? The baby man. Oh, hey, Adam baby, Cole. Ah, hey, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, ah, yes, hey, the baby, baby man. <laughs> I got yes, yes, <laughs> yes, man with baby. Yes, man with the baby. Yes. <laughs> Ever found Very... baby though. And just like uh, that, we took away all seriousness from Adam Cole in this match. Very uh, Google, uh, very Gaga. <laughs> They see go before James goes in the late Gaga mode. Whatever. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. Too late, bro. Uh, um. Well, you're talking about themes of Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart in 2022. I'm also going to go with Cole. Because who won both of those two biggest matches back in the mid to late 90s? Don Michaels. Hmm. Uh, Eric, who you got, Eric? Who you got? I got Dax Harwood. I actually see him making it to the finals. I really do. Ooh. If for no other reason than I, I'm hoping at the very least that AEW is like, hey, Brett, I know you're on a merch deal with Vince, but you're allowed to come down here, right? And we can have you and Martha heal the wounds up. I would like to see that, you know. Also, there, there is something I want to point out between Dax, between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. Other than one, Shawn Michaels made fun of Dax Harwood's depression in WWE, so there you go. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I, th that, uh, that, that, also, it, I, that also is not Adam Cole's doing, and I think there's yeah, a I lot. Know, but, but I wouldn't be surprised if Dax Harwood makes a shot at Shawn Michaels for that. Oh, he will, as it. he should. I can see it. Fuck that. Yeah, but there, but there's something that no one ever talks about. Go ahead. 1992, July 21st, Bret Hart fought Shawn Michaels in the official first ladder match. Right. Bret Hart won. But they never talk about it, like you said. It's almost yeah, like they only talk about it once. On a uh. countdown special regarding ladder matches on the WWE Network. Oh, no, huh. they talked about it um, on that Bret Hart Shawn Michaels rivalry docu documentary. I, you know, oh, I forgot about that. Shit, I didn't watch documentaries, which was brilliant, by the way. I didn't even think about that. Very. You know. 
WWF Wrestling Challenge. Ooh. Fuck. Oh, it was on TV, too. Yeah, and here's the thing. It was for the IC Championship in Portland, Maine. Wow. No love Two for years wow. before Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels happened. I see. Say what, oh. you will. Say what you will about the E. They know how to make documentaries. Yeah. Oh, indeed. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised that I'm not, they're revising it. I'm surprised that yeah, I was about to say I'm surprised they actually acknowledged it, considering they always talk about ah the first one was John Michael's Razor, the second one then apparently. Uh, yeah. Noah, Noah, you're up. It pretty much summed up my men's uh, bracket like this. When you figure about what this represents, it's the Owen Hart Cup. You look at a guy that personifies a love and a passion for professional wrestling, like the drive of Owen Hart, and how much he values the Hart family and what they did. And he's not doing it just for them. He's doing it for his own family, too. So his daughter's going to look up to. Dax Harwood is literally my first ballot candidate to win this whole thing. Like you guys said, it's Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hammond Hart reincarnated. But when it came to this tournament, the very first thing I thought of when it was mentioned was Dax Harwood of FTR. More so than Cash, even. Because when you think about Brett, the first person to talk about it more than anybody is the tag team specialist, Dax Harwood. I'm cold loose to the fact that he's facing a tag team wrestler. Like, he is a great overall singles professional wrestler. But I don't think you sleep on Dax Harwood when you look at his recent singles performances against the likes of CM Punk. Just to name one. His most recent one, by I have, besides his own partner. Uh, that being said, he also says that people like me now, that's pretty cool. But I still am that utterly ruthless, sadistic bastard. And I'm going to bring that out against you, too. If Dax can apply what he brought to the dance first to bring him all these tag team championships while also applying that passion that he has to go all the way in this, I don't think there's anybody that can stop Dax Harwood, even if it's Darby Allen, even if it's Kyle Riley, even if it's Mojo, even if it's Claudio. So just that being said, I have Dax Harwood all the way. And honestly, this could be the closest match we get to a draw. That's how important I feel this match is, not just to tomorrow night's show, but the entire Owen, Dax Harwood all the way. Mm, I could also see them at where it does go the time limit, and then they say this match will continue just like the Iron Man match did with Sean. And, that would be and such a is. great callback. That would be cool. That would be really cool. It would be. Exactly. All right. Imagine if Al Cole goes into Brett's position if they'd say, this match has been scheduled to be continued. Oh, my God, man. What <laughs> oh, a callback yeah, right? that'd be. What a callback indeed. All right, your highness, King Swerve, take us home, big man. Oh, man. I touched it on earlier. Dax's promo on his Twitter um, yesterday. He keep promoting it. That was such a touching promo. And whenever I look at Dax, I look at Brett, especially in that match against Cash and his match against Punk. I look at Brett just basically with his wrestling style, a technician in the ring as a singles competitor let alone a tag team specialist in that matter, which, my God, six-star FTR. If we want to call it tag team of the day, I mean, tag team of the year, give it to FTR, but that's another topic for another day. Um, oh, and then you got Adam Cole. You, I, I feel like they're going to call back certain moves from their feud back in NXT, I do feel like, in this case, because it has that NXT revival. I mean, we were supposed to get revival, Undisputed Era. And NXT, I wanted it. Did it ever happen or did it happen? I can't remember. The only against Red Dragon. Adam Cole and Dax have never locked up. Exactly. I, and I want to see them. And here we are. I'm giving it to Dax all the way. And I'm with Noah here. Dax is taking it all. I'm going with Noah here. Dax is taking it all. Hmm. All right. Funny thing about that last match between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, I found out. Go ahead. So WWE taped it. They just never aired it until mm. 2007's Ladder Match DVD. Okay. I so the first ever Ladder Match, and they're like, we're not going to acknowledge it yet. We'll oh, wait two decades. The fuck? For whatever reason. Uh, for DVD. Oh, whatever. Cool. Um, well, in fairness, they were still getting used to the whole... Uh, uh, schedule that they were doing for TV at that time. They were intending to do an actual live match officially, but that rematch, but that never materialized. Yeah, of course it didn't. Um, do we have any the news now, now that we finally got over the first round of the oh, Owen? 
Because you're the, you're the man much. with all the news. <laughs> okay, so Roman Reigns has now lately been doing this whole teasing and whatnot, how he's going to be doing less house shows. Though initially it did look like he was like, my time is coming up, I might be heading to Hollywood, essentially. He ain't doing yeah, that yet. What the hell's going on? Suffering well, suck at Smash. If he, he shows up a in a movie, deal. I'm going to end like deal with WWE to basically say, I want to work less house shows. You got it. Of course, because Roman be- is the guy in the company. The Bloodline is the biggest money maker of that entire company. Well, you don't have that guy. The bloodline, he but- actually posted on Instagram. Go ahead. Go ahead. He thinks that... He, he, this is him saying this about on TV. This might be the last time the Bloodline teamed together. Ever. At WrestleMania Backlash. Uh. But we'll explain how special it was when the Bloodline won together. So, I mean, if that was their final six-man tag together then i would say that would make sense but when was the last time something WD said something was like this is the one and only time it's going to happen and yeah they've done that many it. times yeah. that's a fair point <laughs> rock and cena mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry and plus, you get bullshit and, my and, throat. and plus um for what i've heard today roman's going to be out for 10 weeks the whole summer yeah, yeah. he's fine mm-hmm. i'll be fine till then but but that does leave the two titles in question because now now what do you do? Money this is the- what happens. Did you not hear about the new rules of the Money in the Bank? What main event WrestleMania? Bingo, which takes away the concept of the Royal Rumble. Wait, so what? The going after to- Rumble? Huh? So what's the Rumble for? Um. Money. Uh, BS? Wait. It's for wow. money. Wait. It's me. Noah Foster, it's me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the chairman, the man with the biggest cojones in professional wrestling. Why do we do anything in this fucking business? It's for money. I need that pay-per-view payday. Give me your... Gu- take out your wallet. Throw Premi- the money at the screen. Through osmosis, I will consume. Premium it. live event payday. They don't do pay-per-view no more. Cause they took, yeah, they took away the pay-per-view name. Yeah, yeah, like, what, what, what the fuck? Oh, Are you being what? serious right now? Yeah, yes. we're serious. Yay. But also, to reference the whole WrestleMania main event with the Money in the Bank contract, yeah, this isn't like a case... Uh, Two things. One, this isn't a case of them saying in the interview and they botched it. No, this was a pre-recorded promo, and it was by Cody. Cody Rhodes. Okay, uh. so Cody wins the money in the bank and is going to win Mania. Okay. So they literally are going to start building so, Cody versus Roman at for WrestleMania. Come after so Lane wait. Is that what you're so me? so hold on. So uh, I know what they're doing then. Maybe. It's Cody. It's Cody, Seth, and and Roman at Mania. Yeah, I just had a realization. I got a realization, everybody. Uh oh. God. They're sticking to two nights. Roman Cody Seth, Roman Rock. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That. Or are they going to do the Wrestle Kingdom <laughs> format where they have Cody versus Seth or Cody versus Roman and vice versa, and then we go and then we take both tiles off of him. Regardless, it sounds like Roman's going to drop those two tiles at WrestleMania, or he's going to overcome The Rock and be unstoppable. Honestly, I think if it once the day comes, he beats The Rock. It, it, it's that done. would be he a pretty big. Left. That would be a pretty well, big what, rub for Cody, though. If wait, go ahead, Mike. What? Go the ahead, Mike. Point though, he's gonna go up against Rock. He's gonna beat him, and then that's it. Great, Dwayne gets a loss. He gets a win. Well, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, a- if they do this method, the New Japan style, uh huh, then Roman beating Rock means that Cody, in theory, gets a bigger rub for beating Roman on night two. There's a but problem, James. You're thinking with common sense. If this is uh, yeah. WWE, they're thinking this. Cody beats Roman on night one. Roman beats The Rock on night two. Yeah, because even though Roman doesn't have the title, Roman still becomes truly the head of the table, being the one person he hasn't really surpassed yet in the family, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. God damn it. What's next? Are they going to fucking dig up Rocky Johnson's fucking corpse and say he could beat the entire family now? Like, what the fuck? What's next? 
Oh, no, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. My ass match. Here's the thing. They're going to do this. They're first going to have Roman beat The Rock, and then they're going to try and see if they could buy out MLW's Fatu contract and have him defeat him. Jacob? Oh, fuck. It's not gonna happen. Listen. Not gonna, no, listen. No. no. The, no. Nor should no. it. I love Jacob Fatu. I think he's an incredible wrestler. I think he's one of the best. I think he might be the best well-rounded wrestler of the entire Samoan dynasty. No. That is the death sentence. No. <laughs> To sell us a car. I'm like, in, in a perfect world, here's what I would do. I would have a WWE get Fatu if they were possible, but he's the one that makes Roman leave the WWE for good. Or at least for an extended that period that of time. For ever. The problem with that, Eric, like you said, the WWE has no real future plan besides Roman at this point to carry the company. Oh, well, yeah. do it for a short haul, but that still is temporary. No, yeah, they're gonna give it to but Drew McIntyre. But here's, oh, wait, here's hold the, on, here's the... hold on, Mike, go ahead. They're gonna oh, give sorry. it to Drew McIntyre, and then he'll finally get to become the chosen one. It's like oh, you were chosen because oh, there was no one him. left. Yep, and then have him carry one of the titles to clash at the uh, clash at the castle. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and then yeah. and then they're gonna ruin that too. Don't oh, worry. Right. Give them about a month. I, you know, oh wait. Damn it, they're going to have Cody win the belts from Drew at Clash of the Castle. Yeah, they will. God, I just had another realization. Because oh, yeah. they think yeah. about it. Wait, no. Whoa. Okay. Wait, I, wait, I got a worse idea. It, it Well, hold on. Even what? That, no, that wouldn't be a bad idea because I get the sentimental reason behind it because Drew and Cody come from the same class of getting fire from the E, going to the Indies, and making something better of themselves. Sure. It's very fair, to say the least. But go ahead, Eric. Here's the WWE idea. Okay, we need to drop... We need Roman We need Roman to drop the title, but we can't have him lose. What's the perfect idea? Um, okay, Vince, I know this is going to be a hard time to think, but how about that time where you did a six-man tag team match and you lost to The Rock and somehow he became champion instead of him beating Triple H? True. Oh, no. Oh, no! Thing. They, they, would do no. they would have the do it again. be the reason he lost the titles instead of having Roman lose fair and square. Yeah, one of the Usos gets pinned instead of the tribal Fuck. chief. Fuck and then that. he bashes it from the family. Well, this is the same company that also didn't do a fucking winner-take-all match at fucking Backlash, which we are saving, by the way, for last, so that way Casey oh, and by the way, deal with that. <laughs> before we get to that, before we ever get to that, um, there is someone who is on the Trouble Chief side who acknowledges him. The fucking dude on NXT. Me. No, no, uh, no, uh, that's something else. He, this is what this person said. I'm sure he could. He's their WWE top guy for a reason, and it works hard to be that guy. I think the match would surprise a lot of people. And his I name, know who you're talking his, about. It is Kenny by God, God Omega. Omega. No, yeah, Omega respects work ethic. That's what that comes down to. Which only leads to my only inter question. If that match was to somehow by miracle happen, I'm like, it's not going to for a variety of reasons. Never yeah. will. <laughs> but imagine Don Callis and, and Paul Heyman talking. That Especially would be cool. That would, that would actually be cool. That would be ballistic, let's be honest. Here's that would be ballistic. Here's the thing. There's a thing that happened with Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega's match. I was like, Don, we know we want the match. You don't need to advertise it. So there's a moment in that match. I don't know if anyone else saw this, but Don Callis is mocking everyone in the crowd, but then he looks like he has like a flash, a post-traumatic post stress disorder flashback, seeing something. He sees a fan holding, wearing an ECW shirt. He's like, "Yeah, but that's a stretch." During his time as Cyrus the Virus, I would love it. I, that would be cool, but that's a stretch. Oh, that's a stretch. It's shit. Mikey Whipwreck. He was in the rafters the whole time, waiting to do the Hurricane Rana spot. He could never fucking hit. <laughs> he tried though. It's him he the tried. whole time. It's him, and then Mick Foley comes down, and he's dressed oh, as Santa Claus, bro, and he's got gifts for everyone. Bro, that dude hit the Stone Cold Stunner from the top more often than he hit that fucking Frankenstein. 
Uh, Sprinky and McFoley, he actually did want to do a Christmas theme Hall of Fame speech. Of where he gets on a sleigh and ascends upwards, and Vince looked at him like, uh, of no. Santa Claus for WWE Hall of Fame confirmed, played by the role oh, of McFoley. Let's do it. <laughs> As oh, nobody else should. His, all, oh, his, his, fourth, his fifth alter ego. His way, his way of soaring to glory, I guess, to a degree. He says, you were about to rant about the tag team title unification match. That is now never going to happen. Because well, I mean, we're not no. there quite yet because there is something else we should definitely talk about that's more fitting. We're talking about, you know, Roman and Kenny Omega, talking about stuff that's forbidden, talking about stuff that's groundbreaking, talking about stuff that is more dynamic. New Japan Pro Wrestling, there might be a little bit of toxic curiosity, but we had recently NJBW Dantaku celebrating King. Bullet Club's anniversary. We hey. also now have an open borders Best Super Juniors, including the freaking Blackpool Combat Club's own Willa Yuta and the current I, champion I Ace Austin. I disagree. I think that Teddy Good's Bearded Club is the better faction. Uh, I disagree. The BWO is the greatest faction. I, think I, I, I don't know. Concern, as far as um, I'm concerned, the most so influential have... faction in all of wrestling right now is Blackpool Combat Club, and that's all I gotta say about that. I disagree. Well, you are, are, you have the right to disagree. Hold, hold on, right hold on, Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike go let, ahead. Me go sac let me go sacrilege on this. <laughs> it is clearly the oddities. <laughs> no, 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 it's the, no, no, it's no, no, the no, no, no. old Legacy Inc. known as Cody Rhodes, um, Randy Orton, and um, uh, the ref did a fuck on me. <laughs> Try to establish what I'm saying here in the name of good professional wrestling, King, Bullet Club, Dantaku. They certainly own the night in more ways than one, too. We saw finally Evil lost the Weight Championship to the good guy now, Tama Tonga. We saw a United States IWGP uh, Championship match done between Tomura Ishii, again, my guy. Damn it! Fell short one more time. And Tanahashi and Bullet Club got a new member. And we also saw the return of the Good Brothers. And in the end, in the third time for the rubber, Okada overcame Naito, but it looks like history might be repeating. And at this point, right before Forbidden Door, we now have Dominion and our marquee matches set up. So, King, I want to talk to you and throw it to you about the catalyst of professional wrestling right now. The Switchblade, Jay White, and everything he's done going through NJBW, AEW, Impact Wrestling, the J US of J Challenge, and NJBW Strong, too. So, I want to get your thoughts regarding Bullet Club in general and the fact he's trying to form this Super Bullet Club, maybe including the SBO Elite. Do you see Jay White heading into Forbidden Door as the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion? I do. Because, well, he is the catalyst. He is the man that basically said, and I caught that last bit of he said, I don't talk to. I still have more surprises up my sleeve. You haven't seen nothing yet. When he, when him and the rest of Bullet Club walked out after they demolished Okada. So if something tells me the catalyst has more sleeves up his, uh, more tricks up his sleeve before we get to Dominion. More because if stuff is trick, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I have a feeling That's he gonna might be a get a certain. Day. He might get a certain baby, and that basically it'll like. I mean, he did say on Dynamite when the announcement was made that oh, uh, it's not about New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's not about AEW, it's about the undisputed elites and Bullet Club. Because it's still our era. Jay White will be heading to, before we get to the Forbidden Door as the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Mm. Now I I turn around with you with this question. Since we talk about Forbidden Door, who would you have him face? If you, if you want to do champion versus champion, or you just want to do top star versus top star at the Forbidden Door? We have the perfect solution. Go well, first, then. And, and I know what I'm about to say is going to be like, we know that's not going to happen for one reason, but I'll say it. Okay. 
It's most we're likely gonna get Hiroshi Tanahashi versus John Moxley there. He's been clamoring for that match. That's, Which gonna, I can't that's, wait. that's gonna be set up this Saturday, Casey, during Ooh, that four way for the IWGP United States Championship, including the new addition to Bullet Club, Juice Robinson. I, I gotta ask Rock you, Casey, but before I get back to Eric, did you see Juice Robinson out of nowhere coming into Bullet Club ever? Yeah, we can celebrate Tony Storm because she's she and Juice Robinson are a thing. I'll be, I'll be on. Woman, there has not been a woman in Bullet Club besides Pizza since the Good Brothers used to walk out with uh, the uh, member. Thank you. Back at Wrestle Kingdom, and she was NWA champion. Yeah, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's better than Evil and the House of Torture. I definitely agree with that. Agreed. Except for Takahashi. He's a treasure and you need to keep him and get him away from that bullshit. <laughs> yes, get the Tokyo Pimp. Get, get him Please, out of there. Please, get him out of there. Oh, and bring Please. The hell They're only saying that because of who does the dancing for him. No, he's a good wrestler and he's funny. Very good. Okay. And plus, I can't, and plus, I can't stand even... Fuck Look, evil. No one can stand evil when he fucked up at Wrestle Kingdom. Tomohel Ishii's record when it comes to classic matches and disgracing the IWGP Never Openweight Championship. Don't get me started. Speaking, but I digress. Of, speaking of the Never Openweight Championship, ain't a certain machine gun going after that Never Openweight Championship now? At Dominion, Carl Anderson, former Casey G1 Climax finalist. Against, if I'm not much mistaken, one Kenny Omega. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong there. But... You are right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, go, go, sorry about that interceptions. Uh, going back to what you were saying, what is your proposed solution to Jay White's Forbidden Door Showcase? We get Brian Danielson a Blackpool Combat Club. Whoa. John Moxley takes on... Hiroshi Tanahashi for the IWGP US title. Brian Danielson says he wants to fight in New Japan. Go after the IWGP World Championship and fight Jay White. Hole. Here's the way. Here's the thing I'm thinking of though. What's the bigger match for Finn Door? Brian Danielson versus Jay White or Mikey? Brian Danielson versus Okada. Ooh. Mike, who, th th that's a good question for you, boy. Who, who do you go yeah, with? Yeah, that is. Okada or Jay White in that scenario to fight Danielson. Uh, you also got to consider CM Punk wants, uh, wants Okada. Yep. Okay, you want money? Like, money. Okay, good match? White? For when it comes to, like, quality? Money. Okada. Yeah. Yeah. He has the ring. Yeah. He makes it Quality J. Money Okada. I feel, like, the... I, feel, I feel like they both can put on a great match with Daniel. No, 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 they so can't, but I'm saying but I'm saying between the two, between Jay White and Okada, who's gonna let Brian do something absolutely fucking crazy that could end their career? Jay Wood. <laughs> Jay Wood, yeah. Okada's got way too much to do something ridiculous that could shorten his career by, like, tenfold. If you want to be pedantic on this, if Naito was cleared by by this point, I'm pretty sure he would do something insane with Brian. Okay, I'll be honest with you. Naito, Naito can he, let him do his thing for a long time. He's he's fine. <laughs> just just he's, like tran Naito. he's tranquilo. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. tranquilo right now. He's going to be because he has to get surgery soon. <laughs> Just yeah. let, 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 let Naito do his thing. We'll come back to the Brian Naito thing, you know, in a good that is the match I want to see. But he's fully line. cleared. Right. And again, you think about who else gets involved in Forbidden Door and what sort of matches it could be in. Kingston, Ishii, uh, we talk about CM Punk, people have said Shingo Takagi, Hammond Adam Page. Zack Sabre Jr. in some sort of way. There, there's a ton of possibility, but when I think about the closing match, the one thing I don't want to see is a rehash of what you saw, James, at G1 Supercard. Jay White's first and only title defense when he was the champion. And he fell short to Okada. Yeah, although that match was fucking... That match... Supremely underrated. That was such a great match live. You like I, I wish people gave it 
confront it on TV. Uh, Jay White, I feel like, would have a better match with Hangman, though, because the gimmicks are, in a sense, very similar. They, they And they both kind of come from that same time period, uh, Ring of Honor 2017 class, like that really standout class. Um, I think there's a story there just from that. Uh, and Casey, I think, can attest to that as well. Yes, I can. Yeah. And not to mention, uh, Hangman was in the Bullet Club when Jay White was just coming up as a young line. Yeah, exactly. Now Jay, mm -hmm. now Jay White is leading the Bullet Club. Mm -hmm. Bullet Club versus Elite, too. If, if you're going to have the era turn on the Elite, the Young Bucks and Omega and go join Jay White's Bullet Club, I can't think of any better fucking match than Hangman defending the Elite's honor. I, I, hey, more than back, anybody hey, else. Hangman coming, back, Hangman coming back to his friends that are now outcasts. Mm -hmm. This yeah. reminds me of something. If you really want to go even deeper with that, J the match that still affects the Elite and was pretty much the precipice for AEW was Jay White till versus Kenny Omega. That is true. Yep. Yeah, Jay White, Jay, Jay White, White beat him. The board club, broke the Elite, and then drove them out of a, of New Japan to go form AEW. And they he could took over the, the Bullet story Club. For yeah, Hangman shit. Trying to, like, trying to, like... Oh, oh my God! That, I did not even Jay think White, about that. Yeah, because Jay White didn't want to join Bullet Club. Kenny Omega's version of Bullet Club. He decided to do the Blade Runner on Kenny Omega, then won the IWGP US Championship from oh. him, and then years later, he... Formed his own with uh, Gato. Yeah, man. Ooh. That's where it all started for Jay White. And ever since then, everything he said has pretty much come to fruition in the end. The only thing that hasn't is him becoming IWGP World Heavyweight Champion against Kota Bouge after fighting that man for 47 minutes. Did yeah. I mention? Yeah. Did I mention I love the Forbidden Door because of so many fucking possibilities? Did I yes. mention this? At least <laughs> once or twice, according to your or my conversations, James. Yeah. Yes, yeah. a lot. The answer is a lot. Um, yeah. what else do we got in the news column? I know. Oh, do we want to? Do we want to cover Under Siege real quick? Oh, or did we? We did that in the beginning already. That, I, mean, that, yeah. I do have one piece You'll, of news. Go ahead. Go, for go it. ahead. Tony Khan finally said, "You guys were right." I misread how you all would react to Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. I... Oh, really? Oh, okay, here we go. I... High school connection. I... Yep. I disagree. I fucking... I think people are... It's well on face, though, that you shit. wonder... You think about the perspective, though, as James is going to lose. I mean, they do draw heat. I mean, they're freaking mixed tag team champions in AAA. Uh, Ty Conti can take a super kick from Penta, so... That's a tough. Are they the inaugural? Opinion. That that feels like new championships. I don't know. If that's inaugural. I don't think it is. But then again, I didn't have. Or like did they bring back? Or maybe. did they bring it back? Because I feel like it wasn't. I, a I think it's something that they uh, brought back because the Triple R is not strangers to doing mixed tag team matches. Sometimes six person. We've seen Deanna Perazzo, for example, and Ty Vargas on opposite sides in a six person uh, match more recently on I think a previous show in Triple uh, A. So. Uh, but does anyone have any thoughts regarding Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti at this point? What should they maybe do? Or, like, you know, what you think of the run so far, too? And do you think they have truly become the Brandy and Cody of AEW? I, 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 they probably have, I and I, I, I tell the fans. Actually, I, I think they have, but only because the fans got way too bitch pissy about two people having sex. Guess what, people? It happens. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> It's not that fucking, it's not that, it's not that crazy of a concept. It's not a fucking thing to get pissy over. Jesus I mean, Christ. I mean, like, I mean, like, if we want to be very dark with this, at least it's not as forced as a previous WWE pairing that they did in bed and TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. And that still pisses me off. But no, people are pissed off because they talked about having sex ne near a title. By, which, by the way, it was so... By the way, all they did, people, and you could look at the photo, 
All they did was do a Shawn Michaels photo shoot with the belt. Yeah, That's just all say, this show they did. <laughs> That's all yes, they did. Man. How many? How many all times? The time. Dude, how many times have we seen people parody that and and we don't see this fucking uproar? On swallowing any bells? Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just got sick. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's like. No. And plus, you have all these people saying, uh, "No, we are defending Sammy's ex fiance's honor, even though she said that they're friends still, and it was a mutual decision." And dear you fucking go, the, the, the ex fiance and Sammy are still friends. Get off his dick! It's fuck. Jesus Christ! <laughs> but, you know, they're gonna just say, "Oh, we must defend her honor, even though she." I can't. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> no, Mikey, go there. Go there. You have my permission. It's my channel. Go there. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> okay. It should like okay. Listen, they're they're two fucking adults doing whatever the hell they want to do. If if the IWC, the Internet Wrestling fucking community of 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 thirty five year old fucking nobodies that are sitting in their basement watching fucking their eight hundredth video on Pornhub are really gonna get that bitch pissy over two people having a relationship. Maybe it's time to open up the curtains in the basement and let the sun in, kiddo. Well see here's here's the thing He's not because wrong. You're, well, you're here, out of line, but you're not wrong. Here's the I'm not, uh, <laughs> hey, there ain't no line here. I'm I'm laying down. Nope. There ain't no fucking lines here. <laughs> Can I, I do want to point out, though, Mike, as much as I agree with you and that it's probably the majority of people, it's not just the majority. Friggin' Pulse had a problem with this, too, and I, and I, I didn't get it. Who cares? I didn't get it. I, if did, you I let, never did if it. Really that stuff like cares, man. You, if That's... you really let something like this bother you, it speaks more about you than it does the fucking thing you're watching. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, let me give you another example of what, why it bothers people. It's basically this all over again. The Brian Dalesen, how dare you go to AEW, even though it's rumored, though. Uh, uh, are we just going to forget that when Candido was with Sonny, you cheered him because he was a great worker? Are we going to forget that when Dustin was with frickin' uh, Marlena, a.k.a. Terry Reynolds, on screen that he was you still cheered him because he was a great worker are we gonna forget there's a difference, James. There's a difference. twitter wasn't a thing back then i want to also say this i want we can agree social media was the worst thing to ever happen for wrestling we can agree to that yeah just, it opened up no, a lot yeah. i would like to also mention remember and i know she's currently a hot topic to talk about but i'm gonna say it remember when Shawn michaels was going after bret hart saying how he had sunny days and everyone cheered over that even though the family was pissed oh man yeah that would get lots of heat now to... yeah it would but you know what there's no such in professional wrestling there's no such thing as bad heat even though you and I James will say yeah there is, there, there, is. There, there, well there's two exceptions to the rule just don't, don't, don't say somebody's down in hell just somebody yeah, that yeah. cares about somebody. Just saying. Don't yeah, don't, don't talk about Hi, passing Vince. members of a family or, or talk about illnesses that they currently have. Here's my daily dose of, Hi, Vince. Fuck you, Vince. Uh, anyway. Uh, I don't know. Your daily dose of, the daily dose of, Hi, Vince. Fuck you, Vince. Can also Keep. give you erectile dysfunction. Please be careful. Casey, your thoughts on <laughs> thoughts on Sammy and Ty having sex? <laughs> Be Fuck! Here. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> That's all it is. It's just two people banging. That's not that fucking serious. God damn no, it! Gangrel wrestling. Gangrel should film it. He'll he'll be fanging and banging. <laughs> <laughs> good shit. That's good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, Casey. <laughs> What you what are your thoughts on 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 the couple uh, of AW right now? My my thoughts are fuck this topic. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Why, it's hilarious. I I think it's funny. I'm having All a good right. time. Good. Well, that, that cheer James up. Okay, good answer. Should I okay, should I know? get the brazzer should I get the brazzer thumbnail on the stream just for the memes that I created of those two? <laughs> this is your channel, so I have no control of what you do. So all right, you you, 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 you guys continue. Go ahead. <laughs> 
This is not brought to you by the Red Crate of Hate either. Uh, that being said, <laughs> we would. Oh, shut up, James. That I being love the said, Red. This is great, man. That's the best name for the Hell in a Cell I've ever heard of in my life. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, that being said, okay, yeah, we covered pretty much every favorite guard in the OA. We talked about AEW to a great degree. We talked about NJPW. We talked about Impact Wrestling's most recent show under siege and our hype for uh, Slammiversary. NWA, Camille still has the brick, still the brick house. New number one contender to find. She will face her at Always Ready. Kylie King. Kylie King, currently the inaugural champion across two different independent all uh, wrestling promotions. One saw women, the other one, she helps train them down there in uh, Florida. When it comes to the NWA, I look at one key thing, and that is the Burke. For me, the Burke is the most protected, well defined championship right now in the NWA on somebody I said that could surpass. Jazz is from a title reign, and in my opinion, truly is kind of like a China. She owns her athleticism, she owns her stature, her class, and she can kick ass. And she is a phenomenal champion that has really grown continuously, showcasing herself better and stronger in the ring. So, that being said, I just want to give people some thoughts on Camille as a champion, and what you expect to maybe see against her and Kylan King. Kind of care, of course, been making her way across the independent scene. Recently was involved on uh, Dark on uh, numerous uh, occasions. I just think, in my opinion right now, again, when I look at this industry, when it comes to the strongest prolific women champions in wrestling, Camille's at the top of the list because I don't see nobody beating her. So I want to just get some thoughts regarding maybe y'all's perspective on women champions in wrestling and where you see Camille stacked up and can somebody def defrone her. Before you, before anybody gives an answer, uh, the thumbnail is now on stream for everybody to see. You're welcome. That means that Casey, your thoughts regarding uh, Camille, and maybe give some highlights towards maybe what you uh, perceive. Maybe somebody finally taking that offer or anything you guys say. Right now, the only person I might be able to see taking the belt offer is Genocide. I'm grown in the NWA. I like that. Those two have not really clashed one on one. This is she, a match there. and it's a match I'd love to see. Is she yeah. related to LAX's homicide and TNA part timer suicide? Uh, no, but <laughs> she just might be genocide. Like... Fuck! Might... <laughs> you had to go there with the name thing, didn't you, buddy? Yes, I did. Oh, go ahead. Put your ass. Go ahead, Casey. Man, continue, continue your thoughts, Casey. <clears throat> um. Camille has, uh, Camille's kind of been on quite the roll. Isn't she really, like, the only one left in Strictly Business with a title? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. So. so that speaks to something about her, doesn't it? Well, let's be honest. She was the strongest member of Strictly Business since day one. I like Camille. Camille's fucking great. And, you know, good, good on her. And unlike, and unlike... Uh, Nick Aldis, she actually went to AEW and actually defended the title on the programming. So, good on her. Oh, my God. You're never going to let that No, go. I to won't. Because it's be stupid. Fair, <laughs> to be fair, she can AEW to bring the title to who was going to be her opponent at the first all-women special for NWA in power. Great show, by the way. Thank you, Mickey James. Hope to see that again this year. And they had a banger of a match. Her and legit Layla Hirsch. Yeah. And, and oh, by the way, legit Layla Hirsch, uh, get well my soon. Point, my point is... AEW, they 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 wanted to go and work with AEW just like they wanted to go and work with AEW the first time around and all this refused. And Camille didn't refuse and said, okay, I'll do business. Can you all, imagine all it comes having down a to, gatekeeper like all it comes down to All it comes down to is if all this won't do business, then business is going to be done for him. And uh, it was done for him, and now Matt Cardona's doing business right. Love me some Matt Cardona. You were the heaviest critic when it came to Trevor Murdoch as the champ. Listen, man. man no, it, it, listen. I love Murdoch. Nice guy. Love the dude. Great human being. He By that time he won that belt, you cannot convince me that that was the worst out-of-shape looking champion at that fucking point. He was so bloated. He couldn't carry a match. Um, he couldn't do uh, a, a lick of things in the ring at all by that point. Um, he was way past his expiration date. I'm sorry. Um, you seem to have thoughts. 
Uh, buddy, you forgot that, what was it, 2003, 2004, fucking the WWE regave Hogan the title? Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. All right, well, hold on. Here's I'm the, just saying. Here's the, I'm just, okay. just saying. In, fa- in the interest of fairness, the difference between Hogan and Murdoch is Hogan at least still looked like Hogan. Murdoch looked like he ate himself. I don't All right. think so because I don't think Hogan looked like Hogan because the Hogan that I saw was six foot four and the Well Hogan yeah, okay. Was he was shorter. Was he was six sh- foot eight. He was shorter. He was shorter, granted. A lot of leg drops, granted, it compressed his body. Uh-huh. But he's Besides that, he still looked like Hogan. He still wrestled like Hogan. There was no so deviation. Wrestled, so what you're saying is, is that he wrestled like fucking shit. Yes, yeah, so at least it was consistent. You know, like <laughs> it's still consistent. It, it, it was shit, like, but it was yeah. still it was still consistent. Murdoch was actually good, and he got really shit when he won the belt. <laughs> Dude, Stad, King Corbin's loving this. So you're telling me that if I have to choose between... Stad is in the world of wrestling. Hold on, hold on, King. Mike, go ahead, sorry. Mike, go ahead. Hold on, hold on. You're telling me I have to choose between became shit or always was shit. I'm going to be honest, I think I'm going to prefer the thing that becomes shit. Kind of like a car that's sitting out in the sun for too long, compared to the fucking rust bucket that's been dead since it started. It can't get the battery to work, and all it knows how to do is brother. You know what? You know what, though? With Hogan, in that in that run that he had, at least he had good matches with The Rock and Vince. That's two more uh-huh. than fucking Murdoch did in his entire NWA title run. And he and he was and he was carried by what two people again? The Rock and yeah, Vince. Yeah, Vince. Yeah, Vince carried yeah. Hogan. Oh yeah. Wait, Hogan. Oh my God, Vince yeah. carried Hogan. He did, dude. He did. He did. He did. He did. A nineteen street fight in Seattle. Yep. Oh, he oh did. I remember he that. Hogan. I remember that very well. Uh, I Eric, do you have anything to add to towards any of this or? The original thing we talked about, Camille and her <laughs> champion. <laughs> okay, if we want to go off the rails, I got something to go off the rails with. Go ahead. Lord. Oh, God. Let's talk about control your narrative then. No! Oh, oh, back to the NWA. Back to the NWA. No, abort mission. Abort I got mission. something. I got no. something. Braun abort and... mission. Abort you, mission. Braun Strowman did something stupid. <laughs> no. No, oh, he, he's going through a character change. You you want to know who he wants to be now? He's more bald? What? No. He has, yeah, pony, he has ponytails, but that's a different matter. So Wait, I'm he, controlling our narrative. He has pigtails, I think. <laughs> pigtails? <laughs> pigtails? <laughs> yeah, but that's, what? That, that's not what's related to this. <laughs> dude, dude. That's the most horrifying visual that I haven't even seen it, and I'll never get it out of my head. Bro, <laughs> some, you know what? Before I get to that, I, I got something more horrifying. I'm gonna just say this before you say that. Actually, um, somebody I think is missing uh, Alexa Bliss a little too much. Continue though. Yeah. So, Braun Strowman. It wants to try a new gimmick. And oh this Lord. new gimmick based is... Based off of somebody. Based off of somebody. He wants to base it off of somebody. It's gotta be Alexa. The Joker? No, no, no. No, this is what he said. Why so serious? Oh, the Joker. Oh, Heath Ledger's Ledger. Joker. Oh, God. Oh. Wait, why does you have ponytails, though, motherfucker? Oh, well, um... Because he's probably lost his mind. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you're in that thing, you don't have a mind to begin with. Before uh, I said this, I'm not the rails. In fact, oh. let, me, let me see if I I'll can show right you back. guys. Yeah, I don't blame you, Mike. I don't blame you. Yeah, because this has gone off the rails, and I was just going to get King's Father and Camille and Women's Championships. <laughs> well, well, okay, well, let me show you the scars. Oh, jeez, you're showing the string. Okay. Yes. All right, here's here's we go, here's boys. Here we go. I'm gonna. Here it is on live. On... Oh, that's so, oh, that's, that's the hawk. 
That's a hawk fro cut. <laughs> what in the world? Homie, I've lost my mind. Homie, you need Jesus. My invention, waiting for you on line one. You are the first in queue. Please pick up. Yeah, please. Please. Oh, oh, it got worse recently with that new gimmick he wants to do. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. Here's what he looks like now. This is the recent, this is today. Oh, Lordy. No. Jesus, no. this is today? Oh, my God. What the fuck? It's even worse. Holy shit! It, Eric has stormed the room. Eric okay. has officially and completed his right. his mission before the HWU. Oh yeah! By, by the way, for for those for those not uh, this, since this is new to the channel uh, and I people are probably like, why aren't you getting to the topic that you're supposed to talk about? This is a th this is actually a thing that Eric does. This is totally allowed. Just make that clear. Um, this Impromptu this age of chaos. Oh, and with that being said, is, this, this is why I'm here, as I am the voice of reason. Some call me the host, but uh, I just like to think I'm go, simple and just... Noah, Noah, wrestling. Noah, go this way. Go to King this way. Well, that's why I was going to ask. King, Camille, your thoughts of her so far as the NWA Women's World Champion. She faces Kylan King at Always Ready now in June. Uh, do you think anybody could take this offer? Will she pass Jazz? Your thoughts, man. Uh, uh, before I give you my answer, let me, give me about three seconds to clear my mind. <laughs> okay, it's clear my mind. That the way Braun Strowman hairdo look was the most scarring moment of your yeah, life so yeah, far. Yeah, scarring, but anyways, getting back to what the whole Camille situation. Um, Camille, in my opinion, it's this generation's China, but you could also say the same about Jay Cargill as well. I would love that match, dude. Or, oh, I would love that scene. But, um... But uh, as far as taking the title off of her, in my opinion, not yet. No. Not yet. That's fair. She's still champ. Not yet. Imagine if Jan and Camille come face to face with each other. Oh, that match. Oh, I need that match to happen. I want that. I want that too. Money, 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 money. You get you you now get that, it. Now that's you get money. to you get my money. Yeah. I'm, I'm going with Camille all the way. Rather, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Camille, Camille's or rather, the stronger or rather, or rather, you get whatever monies James is able to leech off whoever he can. I will give you. I will give you. Where is it? I had a quarter somewhere. Where's the quarter? I don't know. Uh, they, you oh, get this quarter. You get this quarter. Here it is. If you do the match, I have 25 cents. It's not much. It's not much, but it's honest work. 11. Well, all, right, all right, guys. First off, I roll digital. Uh, secondly. I don't uh, think, uh, uh, King. I don't think this is a strip strip club. Settle down, bro. <laughs> also, no one needs to know what's in how, my, how much is in your wallet, brother. Don't, 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 don't set, don't set don't yourself look. up as a target. Is all I have to say, especially in this day and age of technology. Fucking, yeah. all right. no, no, just, no, just, 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 just say NFTs, and I'm pretty sure people would leave afterwards. Oh, Jesus, right? NFTs. That's a whole different NFTs. topic. Not already non wrestling. Well, related. Well, anyway, there was something I wanted to tell you about what happened. What happened last uh, week with Square Enix? Hold on. God damn it! Too many people can go. Yeah, I was about to say before. Right. Before I was gonna let Eric continue. Uh, Mickey, if you want to do the All Women's Empower show, uh, call up oh, Jade, and we'll have Camille and Jade. Yeah, uh, I, I'm. Up. I'm down for that. Actually, I'm really down for that. Uh, Stat Atlanta vs. Genocide too. Ooh, that would be good. Uh, this is, this is some interesting but, things you could do there, actually. But, but Eric, proceed. All right, Eric, what dot, fresh dot, hell dot. are you going to unleash, Eric, on, unleash on us this time? Or Wait. Enix, last week. Wait, hold on. Fuck, what about you, Casey? Did you, Casey? Oh, yeah, you Thank gave you your thoughts, him. actually. Yeah, uh, Mike, he did. what about you? I, I guess, you, oh, you, yeah, although yeah, you don't watch the NWA, do you, much? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Nick Aldis has taken me permanently like like somebody poisoning someone's water supply okay fair enough oh. yeah i'm with I, i'm kind of with you there although i i'm slowly getting back into it now in fairness mike give it a chance again because cardonia is the champion uh anyway yes. uh, go <laughs> go ahead phoenix sold off crystal dynamics and tomb raider and deus ex for nfts wait who square enix huh? sold off crystal dynamics tomb raider deus ex for NFT blockchain technology that's failing. 
Nice. Well, they took a chance and now they're busting. That's on them. But hey, I guess they still have Final Fantasy. Square Enix is one of the most prolific uh, video game uh, names could, and narration. Could you say they didn't go double and went for nothing? Oh. Perhaps. Segway! Well, but, <laughs> I mean, so far, I think we know our two marquee matches that I don't know if they're going to be back-to-back, -back, but again, you have Serena Davis front of Rosa, and you have what probably is the most polarizing match in championship history, definitely in AEW, CM Punk and Heyman Adam Page. <sighs> I mean, we could talk about this match all night as we continue to move forward with it, and We're again, the cars are fully build. The cars are fully build, but they've already got, like you said, a million-dollar um, ticket to the box office in, so this is already the most must-see most anticipated pay-per-view in AEW history, to say the least. I feel with Heyman and, and CM Punk, again, it could truly go either way. Both men have history of MJF, who I feel is only going to be the next champion down the line, the first of the four pillars to be the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. But again, we'll have to see how CM Punk is received literally in less than uh, 17 hours on AEW Dynamite from Long Island, New York, facing Long Island Zone, John Silver. Now, we're not predicting... We're not necessarily forecasting, but when you think about the setup of this match so far and how it came to be, what are y'all's like initial impressions? What do you think is to come, and what do you want to see? Hmm, man. Uh, what, what, with the card or with the match? I think we'll just focus on this match for now, because Delbert Alvin is still far from built. Oh, man. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, since it's, uh, since it's topical to punk... Uh, hey, to the CM Punk, to the CM Punk and Samoa Joe conversation earlier in the chat, uh, nobody talked about it earlier because nobody fucking asked and it wasn't a topic discussion earlier, but since Punk is, uh, we'll read that comment now. Uh, we have this earlier comment from MWE and Manus, uh, I don't know who he is. But uh, CM Punk is overrated to him. Great on the mic, overrated wrestler. Samoa Joe is better and technically uh, carried Punk in ROH. I disagree, but that's whatever, I guess. Uh, Samoa Joe is very boring. I don't know why. Uh, just found him very boring to watch. WWE and TNA. Uh, yeah, nice one. Love loved my talk. Love my chat being full of toxicity. Thanks. Uh, anyway, uh, do people, in general, but get back on track. Uh, here's the thing. He might need to change his name because uh, the authors of Pain are coming back and they're founding their own independent promotion called Wrestling Entertainment Series. Oh, All right. that's interesting. Hopefully it's less. It could Good be. Luck with it, that. Hopefully it's. Hopefully it's better than uh, control your narrative. Uh, anyway, um, uh, my thoughts on Punk uh, and Double or Nothing in general. Double or Nothing is going to be a stack card. There's no doubt about it. They um, always are. They always are. But as far as this match goes, man, I you got to give this to Punk. I love Hangman. Don't don't get me wrong, I do, but. Hey man's got to win it, man. Like, right? He has to. Like, it's now or never. Like, he's not getting any younger, and this is the one time you could at least give him a belt and have it be a short title run to get the belt on MJF. And it's not like they Did do that with the world hey title. Man should win? Did I say hey man? I, dude, it's fucking... Yeah. Dude, it's oh, past oh. one in the morning. It's past one pretty in the much, morning. We're just shooting the breeze at this point. I'm just highlighting last minute stuff that just pops in my mind because that's what impromptu is. Cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I Punk's got to win. Punk's got to win, man. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree with James on this one. I mean, yep. Um, it's basically it has the whole so IWC and basically you're either with Team Hangman or you're with Team Punk because it is the most unpredictable main event in AEW. Yeah, on this that, or nothing I part. can predict Punk, but that's just because of my Booker brain, and that's because the yep. three out of the six people in this room have booked an entire 52-week show. Um, so that's and why I say I, Punk I, I, as well. But I, I I also don't know because Tony's pulled the odd curveball every now and again and have left me he by surprise. He loves to do that and he rarely misses. Uh, although my brain my my brain is saying Punk, but I, how we get because Punk and MJF can be revisited once more and have it basically be booked at all out. Yeah. Well, basically in Chicago. 
where it all started when MJF beat him not once, but twice, in his words. Yeah. But this time you make it for the AEW World title. In Chicago. In Chicago. Too, yeah, yeah. And have MJF fuck beat him over. Punk yeah. for the AEW World title. There you go. And it's got to be a fuck finish too, right? It has to be. Like you and you have yep. to do it, and and not only does it have to be a fuck finish, you have to do it in a way where it's a brutal fuck finish, and there's a post match beat down, and he's gone right for a little bit. That way, because the original plan was supposed to be for Hangman to fight MJF and for him to drop the belt to MJF, and this is before Punk came into the picture, then you can revisit Hangman versus MJF. For Hangman to try to break the full gear curse, because remember, oh wait, no, he already did that last full gear. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah right. Okay. Uh, so still though, um, have the match because there is history there, and have it be MJF and Hangman at full gear, and then I don't even know what you do with MJF at that point. Maybe maybe MJF after full gear. Winter's coming. Wardlow versus MJF again. Mm-hmm. And then when the day comes that MJF has to drop the belt, there's only one man I can think of that could become AEW champion. And oh, that would be... The King, Eddie Kingston. Ooh. Yeah, no, that man that man deserves to be a champion right now. With everything he's done in his life and everything he's become. It, it ought to be very symbolic because then you could go with the one percenter versus the, 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 the normal class. Basically revisit Ted DiBiase, Dusty Rhodes kind of vibe. Ooh, I like that. I'd like to revisit that type of story. It's been a and long he's time. He's been visited to a bill because literally he's just a man. That lives by fighting. Dude, could you imagine the promos between Max and Kingston? Fuck. <laughs> Wait till the night on Dynamite Dude, when we see what happens during this victory speech. I sense another call coming in. Every New York boy is laughing at all of us. It's like, ha ha, we got two of the best promos in our area. Ha ha ha. Well, how much New York is against each other? If the two, if the two you, best promos you know go on in New York, what side you know, will they pick? Yeah, right? That's a Subway series for you. But hey, New York, you may have two of the best promo guys in the industry right now. We New Englanders have literally the entire kingdom. I think we'll take that as a fair trade. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I like the kingdom, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's I mean, tough to, I mean, to pass on Max and Kingston. That is. Well... Yeah, guys, the way I see it is this. It's going to be interesting to see how this just develops with Hangman and the heat he's driving with his promos of where he's pretty much against everybody in the world. That's for CM Punk when I am your champion. And then we got Bizarro World where CM Punk's facing Long Island's own John Silver. And we're going to see what sort of reception CM Punk gets before and after the match. Yeah. I, I Mikey, agree. anything to add? Mike, what do you got? Oh boy, uh, God, the longevity booker in my brain is fucking going ape shit. I figured with that right now. Um, this is me, and I know this is a very fucking niche way to do it, but this is a way to do it where it makes a longer feud and will be something that everybody's gonna want to like continue to keep watching. Have Hangman win. By having MJF fuck Punk out of the win. And he fucks him hard out of that win, dude. He hurts him bad. I just don't like, know. How, how far can you go in terms of hurting him? Because I, unless they're yeah. going to go Jericho route with him, I don't know. Damn. Yeah, but I say, we've already seen the two bloody each other before a dog car match. We saw what happened during that. So, I, mean, I, I think I I genuinely feel like they have to do they have to do it in a title match, Mike. I don't think you could do it. No, in a I, title. I completely you know, I completely agree. And I'm I'm just saying that this is an option that should be talked about because if it's not on the table, then there's only one side of an argument to begin with. I'm just saying that if MJF is the smartest man in professional wrestling, like he likes saying that he is then wouldn't fucking Punk out of a world heavyweight title opportunity by literally screwing him out of that option 
be the smarter bet for him to actually win the title since he's not he hasn't beaten Punk, but he could beat Hangman. I think the smarter decision because you can kill two mm. birds with one stone because he has problems with both these guys. Have That's him true. have him beat have him screw Hangman out of it and have a brutal assault on you know both of those guys maybe have a ref bump or something uh and you know the ref's down or whatever um and then Max comes out possibly with a new faction cuz I mean let's be honest FTR ain't going to be staying in the fucking pinnacle for too much longer here um Maybe a new faction. Maybe maybe Blanchard brings in Blanchard Enterprises to help out. They're brutalizing both of them, and then MJS just drags Punk oh, on top of MJ. Yeah, th- yeah, but that's it. Um, again, I'm just throwing the option out there because it, it, nobody's talking about it. Yeah, because yeah, again, that's another way you also involve both Hammond and MJF in that title picture on the same night, double or nothing, where it all began with those yeah, two, that's... and the title was presented too. At the end of the day, though, I feel like it all goes back to particularly Heyman and MJF keeping it within AEW, and MJF overcomes the Heyman. That's the way I'm going to go point. for. But I know again, one I idea they're never going to go for. Sorry. I, again, I have to see how the promo games go at this point. I, I know, I know you get it, Eric. It's all good. Again, you can you can uh, pose a fight, and then I think we'll finish it out for now, and we'll save the trio styles when they actually become a thing. Because again, folks, rumor. I need to see it to believe it. Fightful yeah, reported it, so they have more credibility than new- ringside news. Yeah, Fightful, well, Fightful absolutely has way more credibility with the amount of shit. Well, that much I do, more. I do believe because I met Sean Rossap personally. But anyway, Eric, your thoughts? Okay, we know one route they're never going to do. If they do this, then I'll, then I'll be disappointed extremely. They're not going to pull the WWE route where MJF screws both and causes a double DQ. Oh, hell to the no. No, no. If, if anything, though, I could see MJF beating both of them and then dragging Punk on top, uh, on top of Hangman for the win, Edge style. Because remember, Edge That's fucked true. Taker or out. Beat them so they can't compete anymore. I'm, go- I'm going back to... Ooh. Ooh. Go ahead. What if he beats both of their asses so they can't compete? Leaving the title vacant, making it easier for him to obtain the belt. That would be fucking heel as shit. Oh, oh god, I just realized something. They could do this. CM Punk defeats Hangman, but then MJF, after the show, beats him down so hard, Punk has no choice but to relinquish it. And they have to do another tournament and do a callback saying MJF's gonna win the first, gonna redeem the era of the first tournament. Mm. Uh, I mean, I CM Punk did say I'm I, gonna I keep fighting until the wheels come off. Go ahead, Casey. I don't, I don't think we need to give Adam Blompied any more cheap uh, pleasures. That's a fair yeah, point. Yeah, cheap too. plugs. Yeah, true. Um, well, uh, King, anything uh, further to add? Pretty much everyone else has spoken their uh, piece. Otherwise, I think that's a pretty good way we'll uh, conclude this free form uh, impromptu. I think I said mine about the whole punk and uh, hangman situation earlier, but uh, yeah, pretty much said mine. All right. Re- regardless, cool. this is going to be a match that's going to define AEW's future, in my opinion, when it comes to who leads that company as champion. Yes. And before we end the podcast and we start doing our cheap plugs, uh, WWE Backlash absolutely sucked, except for three matches. We all in agreement? Cool. Cool. All right. I didn't watch it. Fair enough. I didn't well, watch. So. I am you. Ronda Rousey, congratulations. <laughs> Edge got a new member of Judgment Day. Hopefully this redefines Rhea Ripley's career. That's the one and, person I'm happy for the most is freaking Rhea Ripley. And hopefully Cody does not get stuck in the red crate of hate with Seth Rollins. <laughs> the red crate of hate? <laughs> that will never not be funny. Uh, Jeff's working on that t-shirt for you, I hope. <laughs> Please. Oh lord, he clearly is working on that T-shirt too. Bro, get uh, get that. all them proceeds, but <laughs> fuck me. Yeah, he needs the he needs the money more than me. I know. Yeah, you and I are too nice. <laughs> uh, all right, so she plugs. I'll do Mike Casey's and myself just to save time. Whammy Teeth Wrestling. We we do a thing. Uh, where's my thingy? Where's my business? There it is. Yeah, Hi. Yeah, you, you need a suit jacket like Smart Mark Sterling. Here's the business card. Here it is again. 
Check it out. Watch the shit. Watch this. We, we do. We we do a thing. It's kind of dumb, but, but it's we think cool. it's cool. Yeah, yes. we, we do a thing. It's kind of dumb. We think it's cool. Hey, what's what's cool? Oh God, you you gotta close it out in the Rocky Balboa impression because you are still you have you have not done that on the air yet, and it's two on point. You gotta do it. I'm not. I'm not doing that here. Not tonight. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, okay. The king yeah, commands are. it. The king <laughs> commands about. Hey, he only holds in one segment. Hey, listen. He the thing. listen. All he's gotta do is hit the end button. Listen, listen. <laughs> Because it's on my channel and the king, it was his, it was his ATW view. We demand it. Do it. Yep, <laughs> That's only two votes. It. You're still in a minority. Oh. That's only two votes. Okay. Okay. Three votes. Three Three, votes. There we go. Uh, okay, Eric, okay. Eric, help us Eric, do it. Help us out. Damn it. Help us out. Yeah! <laughs> here we go. No, no, no. Here's, here, here's a better idea. Here's a better idea. Noah, you either do it. Or and 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 I will go and I am probably gonna go for this. I will require uh, James. I know uh, you have connections. Co convince someone to make a photo edit of Yano and Ali. Yes, you either do that or that happens. <laughs> well Fucking end you. Do it, and then it doesn't have to happen, Noah. <laughs> what the hell? Why is this happening to me? <laughs> oh, this content's great. I Can love this shit. Stop getting on my freaking case about that particular wrestler. Jesus. Yes, okay. As long as you do it, then I will. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, anyway, Eric, plug right. your stuff. Well, hold on, hold on. I did, remember, I said I was gonna plug the rest of our stuff. Here, here is. Oh, I thought you were done. Here is Casey's channel. Damn rails. Here is Casey's channel, and here's his Twitter, and here, ready? Wait for it. Is Mike's Twitter, and then that's all of our plugs. You already know where I am. I'm, I'm on here on this channel. It's the same thing that you see, although it's YouTube.com/slash user/slash J Hebert. H e b e r t s i d e nine five. Hey, word. Keyword he. Yes, keyword he. Not Hugh. Not Heb. Not Herb. <laughs> it's, Wait, it's you've heed. been called Heb. Hebert. Heb. Yes, Hebert, Herbert, and Hubert. <laughs> Thanks, Noah. Call <laughs> him James Herbert. <laughs> James Herbert. I heard that. James, James Herbert. Herbert. Yeah, that'll be my deadlock edit and uh, the uh, channel. <laughs> move, move the S. Yeah. Oh lord! There we go. Go, uh, go for are, it. You are a crazy trio, but I appreciate all of your minds. Wait, hold on. Uh, people. Shit, you you got to go last. Uh, Eric, plug your stuff too. Yeah, exactly. Check out at Neo Reality E N T on Twitter. Check out my other content on YouTube on Neo Reality Entertainment, Neo Reality N R E The Wrestlers, Neo Reality Collective Pop Culture News Talk. Uh, let's see. I'm putting back up my gaming stuff, NRE Omni Gaming. And also, uh, if you want to also help me out, I'm on Patreon now. God damn, you got a lot. Nice. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, Marketing himself. Way to go, man. I wish you all the best in that venture. King, you are the host of the Owen Fink. You did a hell of a good job, my friend. And again, good luck to everybody in your Bracketality Contest. Plug and promote your stuff. Follow me on Instagram, AMT. Roman number 23, your number 23, same way as my Twitter. Don't forget, guys, you have until today's Dynamite before it goes on the air. If you want to participate in the Owen Hart Bracketology, I will choose the winner on Monday, May 30th. You got less Make than... Make sure you have your name. Yep. Go Continue. ahead, James. Go ahead. Go, you have less than 24 uh, hours. So you got... you. So put if you win, just give me your name, your address, your shirt size, and then the shirt of your choosing, and we'll get started and we'll go from there. 18 and a half hours and counting down so AW Dynamite commences. Good stuff. And, folks, I'm just a simple man and a lifelong fan of professional wrestling. Find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and at Foster1916. I only wish to encourage you to just enjoy life and enjoy professional wrestling. It's as simple as that before we officially conclude whatever the hell they want me to say in that form. For the entire AW crew here, Eric, Casey, Mike, James, you suck, uh, and King... Well, appreciate you know all of you it. who tune in to this longer than a Monday Night Raw, but far more entertaining and engaging. 
form of talking all things wrestling. Until the next CW view ahead of Double or Nothing. I'll bid you all a normal adieu, but James, what the fuck do you want me to say, man? Uh, I want you to say your catchphrase in Sylvester Stallone voice because that's what made me geek out. Hey, yo, I don't know what you're geeking out for. I'm just a simple man. I love professional wrestling. <laughs> That's going. the last time you're ever hearing that. Good night, Not, everybody. No, hold on, wait, dude. Do enjoy life and enjoy wrestling. Yeah, do that. Dude, I'm, uh, for the love of God, hit the damn button after I do this. Yes. For the last time, I hope tonight, as I got work in six hours, you freaking daggum fools. <laughs> Thank you guys for today at W View, and it's the best of loans impression, the best way I can do it, too. Just enjoy life. Enjoy professional wrestling. Simple as that. And James, fuck you. <laughs>